just a small bison ranch in southern Oklahoma. We're turning that scrap metal into something useful, hopefully. So. Here is a perfect example of what a bison waller is. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Got an unexpected surprise today. Woo, I can't believe this is happening. Um, just wait and see. So my mom called me yesterday and uh, she said, check your Snapchat. And I was like, ah, I'm not very good at checking Snapchat. And um, she goes, you got a new baby. And so um, where I was at, I had no service. So I didn't even get to see the video until I got back home. But um, as soon as I opened it up, I was super excited. We have a new baby on the ground for 2020. It's one of our original herds, our very first herd. Uh, my feisty heifer, Bill Star, has had her first baby. I'm out in the pasture. I've got Marissa's brother with me, Austin. Austin's hanging out. He's uh, he hadn't got to see the bison really much at all. It's gonna be his first time to see a calf. But what we uh, I parked. I I see him down here in the pasture, but uh, I don't know where she is and I don't know where the baby is. So just to be on the safe side, it's her first time having a baby. Um, we are gonna send up the drone and take a look and. Uh, check her from a distance so really excited i'm really pumped we thought eleanor uh sweet little eleanor is gonna have a baby first but it's uh it's not eleanor bell star and so here we go we're gonna check her out
until the baby seems to be doing great. Um, just a really, just kind of a surprise. Uh, Bell Star was showing signs. Um, a couple of things is I, I brought a group of people out and we stood um, at the fence and the bison came up to us and we were feeding them cubes and whatnot and um, Bell Star kept a distance. She she got within about 50 yards from us and she she stayed far away from us. So. I was like, huh, that's weird because she always comes up and gets cubes, but she didn't. And uh, then my mom calls yesterday and um, says, hey, um, you got a baby bison. And um, so it's just really exciting because it's one of my first five. I started out with five. I've got one bull and four heifers. And um, this is our feisty one, Bell Star. So it's just, it's just exciting to have you finally start to see you know basically you know a couple years of work uh, finally come to life because it takes these bison so long they can't breed until they're two and then they have a uh takes a you know nine or ten months to uh, carry that baby and then have that calf and so it's been a long time in the making but we finally have our first original herd baby bison um, remember i had two calves i bought two bred heifers and um 20 uh the fall of 2018 and uh, they had their calf um, but this is just different because it's from my original herd it's from my first um my first herd so anyways um you can tell that the calf is doing great seems to be doing fine um, now we're just uh, gonna keep eye on it we're gonna stay um, kind of a give her some distance uh we just stand on the back of the atv checking on them we're not gonna go in the uh this lot Matter of fact, this is this is the new lot um, that I built. Uh, if you go back and see a couple of my videos, um, but so they're just hanging out. And uh, what I love about it uh, is these bison kind of gravitate as a family around each other um, when they have a baby. And um, my mom and Kevin, um, Kevin who helps do a lot of work for me and take care of the bison, he was actually the first one to see. Uh, the baby yesterday and um, he he, uh, he was out doing some stuff and and, and saw her and um, kind of a surprise to us uh, but um, you know that's okay it's a, we're right in the middle of the season uh, for for uh, calving season for bison so just really excited now we've got Eleanor and we should have peaches and then I have um, one of our cows um, Dakota sorry not Dakota Quapaw that should have um, some more babies so you know, this kind of this may get some things going with uh, with her having a baby now. Eleanor should be next. Bellstar had her baby. We don't know what it is yet. Kevin, um, when he was pretty close to it um, yesterday because he found it, um, he thinks it's a heifer, and I hope to gosh it's a heifer. Bellstar is a really good looking heifer, and I like her confirmation. I like the way she looks, and uh, I hope that it's a heifer because remember we want to build this herd. And um, we can do that by having heifers, and I, I just hope that she is. And we're not going to get too close to her. We're going to give her some time, and you know, when she comes up close to us, maybe we'll be able to see if it's a heifer or a bull. Ugh, I hope it's a heifer. Um, but the red dog is here, is what you call them. These calves, uh, when they come out, they're not brown like uh, mom and dad. They are uh, this red cinnamon color, as you can kind of tell and um, they're called red dogs. So um, we have our first red dog of 2020. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. There's a lot of work that goes into a farm, especially working with bison. If you guys follow me, you've seen the transformation um, and uh, this is the result right here is you finally get to have a red dog um, part of the family that new bison calf and um, can't can't wait to see the others and for them to to join uh, to join the herd but um, I know you probably want to see some up close to that to that baby but not yet we'll get some uh, up close shots and we'll get a lot closer to that baby pretty soon but we're just gonna give them some time uh, this uh, she just had the baby yesterday um, we're thinking kind of in the afternoon or so um, but uh, so we're just gonna give her some distance and let her do her thing and let that baby really get all that uh, colostrum and that good milk from mama uh, to get going
thank you guys for following. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button and follow us. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I'll be shooting some of this, uh, these, these babies. Hopefully, lots of lots of babies here soon. But I'm gonna start. Um, you know, once we give her a couple of days, we'll uh, we'll get a lot of good shots of the baby. And so, stay with us because the next couple of videos, um, we'll, we should have some more babies um, join the Cross Timbers Bison Farm. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today, I'm picking something up for the bison and uh, it's gonna be in the pasture with them. So, uh, let me talk to you about that. I'm gonna explain some stuff on what I'm purchasing to help our bison herd. What do you think? My Lex is good with me. Ready? All right, so I just got back been running around had to stop at Lowe's you're probably wondering what I had in the back of my truck um, that is a uh, picnic table I got um, from Lowe's put some of our cabins this is our cabin home but I had to come by and do some cabin stuff uh, super busy trying to update some cabins and get a lot a lot of work done while I can since I'm not in the classroom but um, had to get a picnic table wife's idea so but take a look here here we go so we got a uh, got a uh, bulk feeder, self feeder, a feed bin. There's so many things that you can call it, but it's basically um, a self feeder, portable feeder for the bison. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this out in the pasture. Um, and I really want to try to um, push the breeding season up a little bit more. And um, so I'm gonna explain it a little bit more to you about why I'm doing that and, and the advantages of, advantages of doing that. But take a look at it though. Um, it's uh, It can hold quite a bit of feed, but I am um, obviously used, didn't feel like really buying a, a, a new one. Um, I'm probably not gonna use it year round, but um, these can slide up and um, I don't know exactly how much it actually holds, but um, the guy told me it'll hold like six ton of feed. Um, I don't really need that much, but you can limit how much you want to put actually in this feeder. It's got a step on it, so you can walk across here, open the top up, um, but and you can adjust how much you want feed-wise right here by using those you can slide them up so um next thing is uh we're gonna go fill this up it's still watermelon and then i'm gonna take it out in the pasture and um we'll see how they do they've never been you know we feed them we supplement feed um you know during the winter when there's when there's really not a lot of grass and we put the hay in but now um this is going to help us and we can also use it to to feed calves and whatnot but um right now they're eating a lot of grass so we don't need this as much but i'm going to explain to you why i got this and the advantages um that hopefully will take place by getting this and using it in a pasture so let's go get some feed and we're going to take it to the bison and put it in the pasture and see how they do so i thought about it i really got to looking at this trailer um, i was about to go fill it up full of feed for the bison but I uh, really got to looking at this trailer and remember this is used, I bought it used, but what I didn't like was this looks a lot better than it did, but 
it was pretty dirty and rusty down here on, on this bottom portion of it which that just comes with any um, cell feeder creep feeder anything like that water is going to collect moisture is going to collect and this is going to get dirty so what i did is i cleaned it out i power washed it i power washed it inside of it and really try to clean out the division part where the feed goes from left to right um, I really cleaned it out and um, then I cleaned out this bottom portion there was still a little bit of feed from it this guy was a um, cattle had a cattle operation and he used a bunch of them but uh, he moved from this uh, solid feed grain feed to, to liquid uh, feed and I don't know much about liquid feed but Anyway, so he was selling a bunch of these bulk feeders, feeders and I needed one, so I got this one. But, um, yes, it's showing a little bit of rust, but I've cleaned it out. I'm going to go back through and scrape it one more time, and then I'm going to vacuum, try to get all that dirt and grime and a lot of that rust out. And then I'm going to go through and paint it um, with an epoxy. Uh, an epoxy, you're probably wondering why you choose an epoxy paint. Well... I know a person that actually builds these. He builds a smaller one. It's 3C cattle feeders out of Mill Creek, Oklahoma. They build uh, the little creep feeders. Um, I needed a bigger one uh, for all my bison, but he uh, he recommended an epoxy paint. So I've cleaned it out and I'm gonna clean it out one more time and then I'm gonna put some epoxy paint on it and then we gotta let it dry and then we'll go get feed for the bison. So um, just trying to do some prevented maintenance before i even go fill the fill this thing up because you know um i'd just rather do it now instead of get out in the field and plus i'd rather have the bison have something clean uh you know some feed coming out of it and, and it be clean and good for them so Now it's time to start painting. We've cleaned this thing out about, I don't know, like three times. We're not gonna get all the rust out, but I think, you know, we did as much as we could. That's just, that's just part of working with metal. But we're gonna start painting this thing and see how it goes on here. So we got the first coat on and uh, I think it went on pretty well we've got a little bit of rust that's seeping through um, as you can tell a little bit as soon as we see it we just put some more paint um, over it and I think it's going on pretty well I kind of like the way it's going on we'll see it's epoxy you know there's several things we could put on this at the end of the day it's rust it's metal it's gonna rust um, you know, maybe in the future we use a um, can of um, Rust-Oleum spray. I don't know. But a little bit, the color's a little bit different. But um, I don't care. It, uh, if, hopefully the bison don't judge it at all. I don't think that they care. All they care about is what's inside of that thing. And um, that's what they're going to be caring about. I promise you. All right. Today we're going to go actually pick up the feed. I think this thing's ready. We have, uh, I'm excited to go get a quite a bit of feed uh, for these bison. I think this will really change some stuff up. 
But um, we're gonna go to Stillwater Millen. Davis got the family with, and uh, we're gonna load this thing down. Let's go. Think Dunbar. size still. Yeah. It's insane. <coughs> <coughs> Bless you. Ah. Did you find it? Finally got the feeder here. Luckily, part of this old dairy uh, farm, we've got this concrete foundation and uh, it's pretty big. It's a pretty big uh, square concrete foundation. So um, we, parked, we parked it right here. Pretty nice. Uh, it's not out when it rains, it's gonna sink because there's a lot of weight in here. We got six tons of feed. It's the same feed I always feed. It's a four-way blend that I always use to feed the bison. Now it's just free choice is what it is, is used for basically. And um, they're still doing a lot of grazing. Um, and um, that's great, that's awesome. Uh, this is just gonna be for them to have free choice food. And um, one of the reasons I'm doing this, a benefit, and I know a lot of other bison guys do this, is because I've got some young heifers um, that are coming into the breeding age. Uh, they're uh, two years old and they'll be able to get pregnant and um, this will help. Um, having that extra feed um, will kind of boost them some and when breeding season comes around late July, August, September time, uh, maybe some of them in October, uh, this will kind of boost some of those young ones and even the cows I remember my sick um, cow Dakota she looks amazing she looks so much better now um, this will help her as well and um, to, so that we can have more babies and we can get those heifers and some of those cows bred uh, this will be a little boost for them um, not forcing it on them by any means they're still grazing but um, this will give them a chance to come and, and feed as they need and they'll still graze and they'll still they'll still do their thing like they have been so
Well, that's it. We uh, it took us a minute to break those uh, wing nuts apart. There's a lot of pressure coming through on the on the feet on those panels. Those panels were sliding up. It's probably not the best design I like, but it it got the job done. And we got we adjusted it where we can kind of regulate how much feed is coming out of of this feeder. And um, we're not going to give them too much. Like I said, it's a self feeder. It's uh, they can regulate their own. The great thing about bison a little bit different than cattle is uh, you're able to do this because bison um, won't fill themselves up. They won't overeat um, supplement feed and um, they kind of can regulate themselves pretty good and they'll get a little bit, they'll go back and graze and they'll come back and eat. Um, so they won't overeat and their stomachs won't swell up and we don't have those sort of issues. So this is the first time that we're doing this, but um, we're able to do this because bison um, won't overeat. So um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, quite, a, quite the process of just doing things for bison and um, you know, just trying to, trying to do some things to change it up and uh, see what kind of changes we can make um, for the future for these bison. So thank you guys for following. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. And, um, if you want to follow a small farm in southern Oklahoma raising America's mammal. Time to get up and add some spice to your life. Cross Timbers Bison Jerky. Now and Jalapeno Cheddar Sticks. Get you some before it's gone. So we're supposed to set the pipe today. Our square tubing in Austin found something in, uh, in one of our holes that we dug uh, the other day. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. We're back on the old dairy slab. Well, it's now a bison handling uh, facility. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a tough project, a big project. Um, we're gonna start putting a barn up, uh, a top over this um, so we can protect our equipment. And if we ever need to work the bison, um, when the weather's nasty, we can get them worked. We've got the concrete slab here. We're gonna build this barn over it. It's gonna be a 50 by 30 barn. And uh, we're gonna use three by three um, square tubing for this. And um, we're just gonna get, we got a lot of work to do. We're gonna drill some holes today. This is the this is the very beginning stages of this. I got Marissa's brother, Austin. He's, uh, he's still helping me out and uh, getting some of this big stuff done. He's got a lot of construction background. So that's gonna help. Let's get it started. rented the groundhog with a 10 inch auger bit uh, we rented it from uh, GP rents in Davis where uh, Daniel and I from Arms Family Homestead get all of our stuff when we rent from and uh, we got this thing for for 24 hours so we've got some holes to dig we're gonna set post every 10 feet this concrete slab is not very square so uh, it's a little deceiving on our eyes, but um, we're gonna we're gonna do our best and, and get the barn square, which is the most important thing as we build this. So we're gonna put 10 foot holes right through here. We're gonna put one in between here, and we'll have our 50 foot long here, and it's 30 wide. Make sure it's gonna cover the whole concrete foundation. It's gonna be awesome.
it's gonna be a tight spot for us here with this uh big tree the big tree still has to go down but um we're gonna face some root problems for sure yeah it's gonna be tough right here but we're getting pretty close got some more holes to dig but just hope the thing's square right austin <laughs> Fire that puppy up. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, oh. Hey guys, welcome back to day two. Probably the most important day. One, we're getting all of our pipe and equipment for this barn delivered here in just a second. Um, we've got a jackhammer, jackhammer out here. Um, we've had to break up a little bit of this concrete so we can set our holes in the right place. The old, the old dairy barn foundation. So Austin's jackhammering away and um, we're just getting it going. It's got, we've got a long day ahead of us. Um, but the other important thing is besides getting all the pipe and the trusses and everything, we're gonna set the pipe and concrete and uh, get those things nice and straight. So we're gonna set all the posts today. We're using three by three square tubing, 11 gauge. So we got our hands full today, but probably the most important thing is we gotta get these uh, poles right. We gotta get all that set so we make sure it's square. Got a lot of work. Let's get it going. So we're supposed to set the pipe today, our square tubing and Austin found something in, uh, in one of our holes that we dug uh, the other day. These are baby skunks. Cute, kinda, little, cute little kinda, things. They're kinda cute, but I don't know if they can spray or anything. We might need to Google that before we... We need to Google that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. Three of them. Don't they bite? Rabies. See, I, I don't think that's the way to do it. Boy. Oh, they're young. <laughs> hey guys. Oh. Crazy looking little things. Their eyes are still closed in Boston. That one's almost white. You're gonna live to fight another day. Mm. They're up and at it now. Yeah, they are. And those tails are too. Tails are up. Well, maybe their eyes are open. Some of them are. I had to use a bag of one for sure if these babies were gonna spray us or not. Um, said they can spray at a month old, but we didn't really know how old they are. But. It looks like they still have their eyes um, closed, so these guys are pretty young. We also found a kitten in another hole. Yeah, got these posts set, Austin. We're playing ranger duty. Yeah, <laughs> wildlife savers. So, next question is, what are we going to do with these baby skunks? Well, I have a really soft heart for animals, and <sighs> Austin are going to take them out here and let them go. We don't know where mom is, obviously, but um. Maybe she'll come back and 
and find their babies uh, so we're gonna let these guys go in the pasture and um, we'll see what happens um, we'll just let them go at least give them a chance maybe maybe they'll find mom or mom will come back and sniff them out I don't know I don't know much about skunks but we know that uh, they can stink so all right we're gonna let these babies go All right, guys, time to set you free. Maya, back. Come on, Maya. Come on, let's go. Load up. Come on. Let's go. Get up there. Just okay. a real rancher controlling his dog. Yeah. I think it's neat that they're all a different color. Okay, I'm trying to dig. Yeah, it is. Hey, buddy. Oh, come on. It smelled a little bit. Yeah, probably mom. Okay. Good luck, fellas. All right, so we've got all of our holes dug. Um, we had to we had to jackhammer some of this concrete from this leftover foundation, this dairy barn. So we got through it, and we've got all of our holes ready to go. Didn't find any more critters in them. Just a kitten and and some baby skunks is all we found in the. In the holes but luckily we didn't find any more so we came back after but so now the fun part is is getting as we're gonna start to set this pipe and put it in pour some concrete mix we're gonna start um, leveling this pipe out uh, one of the issues that we're facing is on this old pad it slopes and we're gonna have to do a bit of a elevation change, I guess you could call it, um, height. But um, the most important part is that we get our um, we get our post or we get our barn. We're gonna have it 10 feet tall, so it'll be 10 feet tall off of our old dairy barn foundation here. And uh, down here on this end, it's a uh, pretty level ground, and then it drops off down here so that's kind of one of our challenges plus we're going around all this concrete and um, some parts of this slab slope and maybe it have dropped over time and uh, that's another challenge is this concrete pad of this foundation can be deceiving with your eyes uh, because it's it's not square not sure when it was built but um, a lot of it can trick your eyes a little bit so we just got to make sure that our barn is square uh, regardless of the foundation that is here because it is crooked in some places we're gonna start setting this three by three post um, we bought some 20 footers um, and we bought some 24 footers it's um, three by three inch square tubing and it's 11 gauge
Uh, hey guys, got the bison come up here to check us out. We were able to see the baby up close and um, really excited because it's a heifer and uh, Bell Star is a great, what in the world? People are trying to bother me while I'm videoing. Come on. Bell Star is a great looking heifer. Now she's a cow, but really excited about that, that she came up here. Really cool. Got within probably three feet of that baby. And, um, mama didn't like it, but <laughs> I was not in the pen. But a couple of things. Austin and I have been putting a lot of work into this. We've got uh, all but two posts set. We've got a lot of them done. So we've got two more posts. You can see some over here. Um, but we've run into some obstacles. Like I've said before, um, we had to get through concrete. And we got this tree in the way we've got to get rid of that tree um so that's gonna be fun getting rid of that we'll set one more post here one more post here we're getting close then we can hang our trusses once our post um are dry and concrete for a couple days we can set our trusses across here 30 feet wide we're getting there Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Came out to check on the herd and our two, yes, two red dogs. We, uh, we are growing. This herd is growing. <laughs> So if you want to see something really cool, I was headed to um, to our ranch to check on our baby uh, bison, check on the calf, check on the herd, and uh, there's a place in the park where you have to drive through to get to um, to our ranch. And um, on the way there, we go through that national park, Chickasaw National Recreation Area, and it's where I used to work. We drive by and look what's out here this morning. Baby calves. I was wondering if they had any baby calves. So this is the herd that I used to take care of. You can hear the cars come by because uh, this is called the Bison Viewpoint. And uh, it's probably one of the most popular spots in, in our park. Uh, so where our cabins are, we have the National Park as well. It goes all the way over there and that's the lake side of it but this is the kind of um town side of it and we're getting right at the edge of town but um it's hard to see these bison because you can tell there's a lot of trees uh, it's probably not the best uh pasture for bison but um, so daniel from arms family homestead and i uh this is where we worked <laughs> this is where we started this was one of our jobs was to come out here and take care of the bison and this is one of the funnest parts about it, is seeing these babies. So it's so hard to tell sometimes if they have any babies out here or not because they're hardly up there. It looks like they've got three calves. Those calves are a little bit bigger than mine. But you can stand along here. There's a trail, it's called the Buffalo Trail. And you can hike this trail. I think it's a little over two miles all the way around. Um, but uh, here's one of the best parts of this park is the bison this is where it all started for me is right here this was my first time to be hands-on with bison uh was right here in this pasture 
I'm with Daniel and I from Arms Family Homestead. Uh, we worked in this park and this was the highlight of our days um, and the highlight of our job is we got to come take care of the bison. We want to make sure they're uh, watered and every now and then we'd bring them same cubes that I feed my bison for a little treat every now and then. We'd come check them and give them some cubes. But this is where it all started for me was right here. And uh, I was just driving by this morning on the way to our ranch to check on our babies. And uh, I see those three red dogs out there and you can't miss them um, because they stick out so much. That red cinnamon color, that famous um, unique color of bison, baby bison. So some of you are probably wondering how many are in here? It looks like there's uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. About nine, and you got, I see one main bull. And uh, one of the cool things about this is my boss, um, in my second year working in this park, we got to go to the Wichita Mountains and pick up a bull. The bull here was older. He was probably 20 years old, uh, at least. Uh, his name was Crooked Horn. But uh, he was just getting to the age where he couldn't breed as much anymore. So we went and got a young bull over at the Wichita Mountains. And this is where uh, I fell in love with the bison and, and being a part of this. Look at him. So you hardly ever get to catch a glimpse of them. And you can tell they're, they're grazing. They started over here and now they're making their way this way. And um, uh, they are used to people. They're not used to people being in the pasture with them like mine are. Um, but they're used to people being up here on the fence. So to catch a glimpse of them here, um, because they can go in the very far back of the property uh, is awesome and it's good to see the baby calves out here That's exciting, so let's go check ours <laughs> So yesterday I was working here around the ranch and I noticed that Eleanor was not around the main herd so what I did was is I stopped and I sent I sent the drone up and um, and once I got the drone there I kind of got close to her to see if she would get up and she didn't um, she obviously stayed there and I saw her laid out and knew that she was in labor so um, I knew what was gonna happen next uh, I had to go back to work and get stuff done at the cabin so I didn't get to see the live birth but we do have number two baby Eleanor's baby Looky here, Eleanor's got her baby. So Eleanor's had her very first calf and uh, this is exciting because Eleanor, it's Eleanor, it's our sweet little fan favorite Eleanor, our uh, our most uh, gentle bison for sure. She's always been gentle. Uh, she's a little shorter too. That's just I, she's really long, which is which is a a great feature. But and then I don't know why she is so short. But um, it's just exciting to have uh, to see Eleanor have her uh, her own baby. Um, unfortunately, it's a bull. But you know what? That's part of that's part of it. It's part of raising bison. In my first year, I had two bull calves. Um, at least we got one heifer from Bell Star that has a heifer, but I'm pretty sure this is a little bull. Um, so that's okay. I'm excited to even just have calves out here. Um, so we're back to where we were last year. We've got two and we're waiting on one more. I love that Eleanor has a calf now and it's so fun.
Quapaw is the next one due. So we're waiting on her. Keeping an eye on her. So what she'll probably do is just like the other um, mama bison that we've had is she'll start to isolate herself. She'll start to be off by herself. She'll distance herself from the herd. And she's kind of feisty, so I don't, uh, Woo. I don't trust her all the time, so I'm going to keep this gate between us. Uh, but, uh, Guapa, um, what she should do is she'll start to kind of isolate herself from the herd. She'll, she'll, um, she'll keep a far distance. She may not come up and, uh, be as close to me or, or anybody out here you'll start to see that bell star did it uh, uh my first heifer that had a calf uh, this year eleanor did it i uh, read those signs and um we should start to see her last year quapa didn't have a baby until june 27th so we're kind of right here in her time frame um dakota didn't have her calf till july 14th one of the reasons why we have this feeder is we want these bison to have their calves a little bit earlier. Uh, the only thing that really kind of stresses me out a little bit is if they have their babies so late in the summer, it's already hot. Um, and it, it can be hard on these babies. And um, so I'd just rather them have their calves a little earlier. And uh, plus another benefit of, of that feeder, like I may have mentioned, um, is they... Um, your calves are a little bit bigger when you go to sell and you can sell bigger animals. So that's another benefit as well. But um, anyways, that's kind of the process. You can see her udder has dropped some. You can't see it, but I can see it. Um, her udder is filling up. These udders are not like uh, a dairy cow. I mean, it's not, it's not very big. It's not gonna drop really low. Um, their udders are pretty tight. Uh, but um, there's some other signs that you can read but the main thing is you start to see the isolation I well, hope you guys enjoyed the video today it's always uh, fun to get up close to those baby calves that was the first time that I put my um, my monster truck remote control uh, car up close to them just attached my GoPro to it like you've uh, probably seen in one of my previous videos but um, it's the first time I've had that out there in the pasture with them and, and they, I think they handled it pretty well. They, You can tell these bison are so curious. They, uh, they know everything that's in their pasture and when something new shows up, uh, they wanna know what it is so they come up and sniff it. That's fun to see those calves do that and uh, slobbered all over the GoPro, had to clean it. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video um, and, and seeing those calves, they're both doing great. One heifer and one bull and i'm pretty sure we've got just one more due and that's going to be qual paws um just wait and see and watch for signs just like we do with the others so stay tuned with us you guys can follow us on instagram you can follow us on facebook i've got some new shirts coming around the corner so stay tuned for that um i've put a lot of work into uh, making a couple of cool new designs nothing's changing my logo is still the same just have a couple of shirts I'm gonna throw out there. So thank you guys for following us. And if you haven't, just wanna follow us along, you can follow a, a small ranch in Southern Oklahoma raising the American bison. Thank you guys. How many of you absolutely hate flies? You're sitting at the dinner table and you're hanging out outside and they're just buzzing around you in your ear you get on your food and you're always trying to swat them it's nasty it's gross right we hate flies so do the bison that's why you see that tail wagging all the time trying to get off their back well those flies almost took away one of my bison last year dakota she almost died because of a horse fly bite she spreads a disease called anaplasmosis today i'm going to try to prevent that uh, doing a couple things around the ranch. Here's one example right here. Here we go.
Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Timbers Bison. Today I got a little project. I'm gonna do a little bit of fly repellent work. I'm gonna put up a rub and I'm gonna put some uh, some seven dust on some uh, bison wallers. If you don't know what a bison waller is, um, it's pretty neat. So the depression in the ground where they roll and roll and roll and they always go back to the same ones. There's, there's several all over the property. Uh, that's where they dust off. Um, but we're going to do some preventative fly maintenance today. If you guys remember, last year I almost lost a cow because of a horse fly. She got anaplasmosis, Dakota, and it, she lost so much weight, she nearly died. And uh, I had to act um, pretty quick because I knew she was getting worse and worse. So I actually had to load her up and take her to the vet and, and um, let Doc Parsons from Stratford Animal Clinic, my bison guy, really take a good look at her and it didn't take long less than a minute he looked at her saw some signs and he knew it was anaplasmosis and um, you can go back and watch one of my videos of that um, of that day of me taking her up there from then and this since the spring it's amazing how far she's came and uh, one of the reasons is because of the antibiotics that we had to get her on she's made a huge huge change and com completely taken a 180 and um, hopefully this year she'll be able So what I'm gonna do is I've got a 10 foot rub and I'm gonna mix up some concentrate. Um, everybody's told me to use this. It's uh, supposedly one of the best, um, uh, best solutions to handle the flies. I'm gonna tie it up right here. They like to come through here. This is kind of the main part of the corral. Um, so I'm gonna tie this up here. I'm gonna get that concentrate on it. Uh, fly repellent, I'm gonna put it right here so that they can rub on it. Um, and they do like to rub. They, they rub on trees, they rub on posts. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna see how it goes. Um, I don't know. I think Dunbar's gonna tear it up, but we might as well try. All right, so got the rub on. We'll see how it goes. I uh, just used a bunch of, I just used a bunch of uh, extra chain. These chain and clips, you can never have enough chain and clips around a, a bison ranch because uh, all of our gates and stuff, we always extra proof with chain. So now what I'm gonna do is, what I'm using is Prolate Lintox. Um, I was told by a lot of people, even cattle people, uh, that this is pretty good stuff, but it's going to control the horn flies, help with lice, um, ticks. We don't have a lot of ticks here, um, but mostly horse flies and just the regular um, flies that are around the bison. But um, so we're going to mix this with diesel. I know a lot of you are going diesel. Well, diesel, you'd be surprised, is used quite a bit on rubs like this or sprays to prevent flies. Um, guys, a simple fly, horn fly, uh, a horse fly, any of those can take down a, a, a bison and can take down any sort of livestock. If you've been in the livestock in the industry, you know that, and I almost lost one, um, Dakota, as I've talked about several times. Um, so I'm gonna mix this, I've already got two gallons of diesel and for this rub it says you can mix up two uh, two gallons of your mixture and so I'm gonna add eight ounces of this uh, prolate to um, to the uh, to the diesel and then I'm gonna spray it on there That could be a problem. So much for using the sprayer. 
leaking out the side of the, <laughs> the hose is busted. It's always something, isn't it? Had a hose. This hose had a was busted and was leaking. Luckily, I found another one. This one's only a gallon, so I had to pour it from the two gallon to the gallon. So <laughs> maybe now we can uh, spray. gonna be a while. Okay, so something else I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to put some seven dust on some of their bison wallers. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is send up the drone and see if I can get some good footage of what it's like up and see if I can find some of those bison wallers. I have an idea of where some of them are actually at, but um, I don't know where all of them are. And once so, I find them, I'm gonna go through and put some of that seven dust on. Just another preventive besides the rub that we're gonna try to keep these flies away and try to keep her bison healthy. So here is a perfect example of what a bison waller is. I say waller, like I said, it's my accent, forgive me, it's okay. But this is a perfect example of one right here. So some of you, <sighs> so if a lot of you don't know what a bison waller is, this is where the bison basically This is basically where the bison um, roll around. They kind of dust off to get some uh, get some of those parasites off of them, just kind of clean off, um, get the flies off of them. Some of that dirt helps prevent, get some of that stuff off. And um, I don't know, they're just like rolling around in it. But um, anyways, we're gonna put some seven dust on this and, uh, and see how it goes. But uh, a lot of you, some of you historians, um, you can actually still see a lot of these on the Great Plains um, from, from whenever we had, um, you know, hundreds of millions of bison. Actually, you can still see a lot of these depressions um, from the uh, 17, 1800s from when we had 
you know, thousands and thousands of bison, um, 30 to 60 million bison roaming around uh, the Great Plains. You can still see a lot of these depressions because uh, they just will come back to the same one or however many they have and where they're grazing and they'll hit it over time. And it'll be the whole herd that'll keep rubbing on this. And over time, that depression, it kind of sets in uh, that they keep wallering it out. And on the Great Plains, in some places, at, when it rains, it fills up with water. And so then they drink out of it. And um, then when it dries up, they go back to using it as a, as a bison waller. And then, uh, you know, they also will lay in it after a rain when it's, if they have drank the water out of it and it gets muddy then they can lay in it and cool off as well. So it's, uh, it's pretty beneficial to the bison, uh, nature's way of, of comfort, I guess you could say, um, and cleanliness and cooling off and for water. So it provides a lot, but you can still see a lot of these in the Great Plains. Uh, a lot of ranches and farms, I know in parts of Oklahoma, there's still lots of these um, found across um, a lot of properties. So. If, uh, if you have any or you know of someone on the part of the Great Plains that has some of these, let me know. I think it's really cool and um, it's just living history that it's still there and to think that, you know, millions of bison came through there and kept hitting that um, bison waller, that waller over and over and over for hundreds of years. I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. also want to make one other point guys this right here what you see is dead is cockaburrs and you guys know that i absolutely hate cockaburrs watch some of my older videos of me battling these things and they get all over our bison but kevin um really hammered these things and he killed a bunch in this pasture this is the same pasture that i burnt um and uh, it had a lot of cockaburras already in it um, last year. Um, but he came through and sprayed, and man, he absolutely sapped them. So thank you to Kevin. This one's not very big. I put out about four or five of these bison wallers. Um, I put some at seven dust on them. I had about four or five good ones I thought were used quite a bit. So um, we did that. We've got the rub set up and uh, now we'll just see how it goes. Hopefully uh, it decreases those flies. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I know you didn't get to see the bison as much, uh, but this is these are things that we try to do to help uh, take care of our bison and keep their keep them keep them really healthy. Um, this kind of forces you into doing this whenever you have a situation. And last year we had a situation where we almost lost one of our our best cows, um, Dakota, and um, it, it was really serious. And so we're gonna try to do a better job. It's all about learning. And so we're gonna see. If, uh, if, this, if this stuff works, uh, the seven dust and then the concentrate mixture. And we're gonna see if all that works uh, and see if that rub um, is uh, pretty beneficial to them. We'll see if Dunbar doesn't tear it up. Hopefully he doesn't. Um, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed seeing the babies. Um, we've got one more 
do. Um, that's Quapaws, and this will be her second. And I am hoping, hoping for another heifer. We've only got one baby heifer ever, part of the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. And um, hopefully we have another heifer. So. Thank you guys for following. You can always follow us on Facebook or Instagram. You guys remember I told you I came up with a couple new t-shirts? Well, here is one of them right here. Support your local bison herd. It doesn't matter where it is, where you are, support your local bison herd. Um, if you haven't, go visit a local bison ranch. It's a great experience. Um, reach out to somebody local. Um, you can get on the Bison Central website, and I think you can find people that way. Um, the internet is amazing, so you can find uh, lots of resources on there. Um, but just ask around and, and go visit a bison ranch. And um, you know what? It's a it's a really cool experience. And um, you know, go see what they do different than what I do, and uh, see how see how people do other uh, handle other ranches and raise bison. And so, if you are interested in the T-shirt. Uh, check out my website. It's on crosstimmersbison.com. Um, I'm going to have different colors of these shirts. I think I got about four different colors um, for this uh, support your local bison herd. So thank you guys for following. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. This is actually starting to look like something. Get her done constructions. Getting her done. For sure. <laughs> Okay, as you can see, 
We've got our trusses put up and uh, except one more because we had to set a pipe because um, we got rid of a big old tree. I had to get rid of that, but we've got our last pipe set up. Um, it's been setting for a couple of days, so plenty of time to, to be stable setting that concrete. But we got to put one more truss up. But what we're going to start doing today is we're going to start putting up our sidewall. I'm going to put up a wall on this north side just to protect from weather and wind um, that we get. Most of our weather that we get comes from the north. So we're going to put a wall across here and we're using some sea purlin for that. And we're going to start putting on um, the sea purlin out on the top because that's where our sheet metal is going to go. Hadn't picked out a color for that yet, but um, we're getting ready to, to order all that metal. So we're going to start putting our sea purlin up on the sides and on the top and um, pretty soon we'll have a barn. So also uh, something I wanted to say is if, uh, if you didn't watch uh, one of my previous videos, there's a part one to this. It showed you kind of the foundation of how we did everything, um, setting our posts or digging the holes, setting the post, and um, just kind of getting the beginning stages of this started. We had some obstacles to deal with, uh, you know, when you find a kitten or and uh, three baby skunks in a hole, uh, it diverted our plans a little bit, and we uh, that was kind of interesting and fun. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch the part one. Uh, to building this barn and uh, you may get a kick out of it. We, ha uh, we had fun with some baby skunks. Um, found them in one of the holes that we set. We found uh, skunks and uh, we found three baby skunks in one of the holes that we dug. They fell in there and we saw them the next morning and we took care of them. So go back and watch that video and you can see the first part of this. And um, now we're gonna wrap it up here with part two of building a barn for the bison handling system. Get her done construction right here in case you guys didn't know. Austin and I have been getting after this barn. We're getting close to being done with the structure. Actually starting to look like an actual structure. But uh yeah, we just try to get stuff done. We uh you know sometimes don't know what the heck we're doing, but you know what? You just gotta dive in there and you know what? We eventually get stuff done and uh somehow we do. I don't know how sometimes, but uh the building came out pretty uh, pretty sound and uh, pretty square. We're kind of surprised, but it's just that get her done construction. Hey, buddy. Look at the little, look at the little fellas. Getting so big. 
today's the last day uh, i'm going to finish the frame for our barn i've got a couple more links of uh, sea perlin to put up uh, one of the walls that i'm going to put up and then uh, we're going to be set we're going to be ready to put on our metal um, i went and picked up our new metal i really like the color and i'm going to do a little contrast with it on the trim and on the uh, roof ridge line so uh, i'm excited to get this on I've lost my uh, get her done construction partner, Austin. Uh, he's on a little vacation, so um, he helped me a bunch. You saw through this video, um, and uh, we had a lot of fun building uh, building this barn. He's he's been a lot of help, but um, he's uh, he's having some fun now, and um, I got to finish the barn. So, um, but I've got my family, and I've got uh, Kevin to to help me and and some, uh, some people to help me uh, get this barn done. We're getting electricity ran through it and putting a lot of effort into that. And uh, so we're getting this thing going. Peach is getting in the water. It's not even hot yet. guys we are about done here um, got a couple more uh, sea perlin to attach but we about got it right here um, bison came to check on me uh, it's a pretty cool view from up here it's hot uh, middle of summer in Oklahoma but uh, isn't that pretty just having those bison green grass it's all good it reminds you what, why you're uh, out here sweating and, and uh, working hard and all this. And for those, those animals right there, pretty cool. <sighs> well, guys, that is a wrap on this building. Uh, it's 30 by 50 barn. I've got the frame up and uh, we're done with the framing part. Last thing to do is put that sheet metal on. I'm excited to uh, get that sheet metal on to get the, get the full thing and, and be done with it. And um, I'm excited to see how it looks. I got this charcoal gray um, with a cool accent color. Um, but it is done and um, it's just nice. Oh. You know, and uh, it's just nice to know you got one more thing left to do. But, you know, we put a lot of hard work into this. I want to thank uh, Austin, my brother-in-law. It's uh, He's been down here uh, for probably a month uh, visiting Marissa and I and Brooks. And he, uh, he helped me do a lot of this work. And um, I need to thank him for that. He's part of that uh, get her done construction that, uh, that we came up with. And, uh, you know, uh, for our first... Uh, pole barn or barn um, I think it uh, you know you go through lots of obstacles no matter if you've done it for years um, we haven't done it for years I haven't done it for years um, it's my first one 
Um, you know, you go through obstacles no matter what. I'd say the toughest part is building over something existing, um, like this old dairy foundation that we that we used. That's the toughest part of it, and um, you know, is is kind of big, 30 by 50, and so you had to work around these things. You know, kitten, uh, baby skunks, a big old dad gum tree that was in the way, um, and then you know, just the foundation being. Uh, not very square. I don't know when it was made, but it's pretty old and and uh, you cannot always count on other people's work and that was done a long time ago with probably less resources. So I give it, give them credit for this uh, thick old foundation that we're using now turning into a bison handling facility. Um, but I want to thank him. I want to thank my wife for letting me do this. Um, I spend a lot of time at the cabins. I spend a lot of time out here working with the bison. Um, doing stuff like this and um, so I need to thank her for that as well. I want to thank Kevin uh, For uh, being the supervisor of get her done construction making sure we're not doing anything too stupid <laughs> Considering it's our first barn and uh, you know, it was Austin and I so we had fun with it though and uh, You know, we did the best we could and now let's just wrap it up with this metal Thank you guys for watching if you didn't watch there's a part one to this in my previous video go back and watch part one of just oh what a start man what a start just some funny obstacles we went through and some stuff we encountered we uh, are not used to encountering so anyways thank you guys for watching and um, we're almost done with this thing there will be a part three to see this and I'm also excited we're getting power hooked up and uh, we're about to start another project I know lots of projects right but we're gonna start another project and that's going to be uh, establishing our water system throughout our uh, paddocks or our different pastures for the bison. That'll be another project. That'll be fun, I'm sure. Probably no obstacles at all. Just kidding. Yeah, we'll probably go through that. And it's hot as heck. It's summer in Oklahoma. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't, uh, hit that subscribe button and follow us. Uh, just a small bison ranch in southern Oklahoma. Uh, raising the American Bison. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook. And if you want to shop a little bit, we've got some shirts and some hats on uh, my website. It's crosstimbersbison.com. Thank you, guys. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Thank you guys for watching us. It's an exciting time. It's uh, we're getting a lot of a lot of stuff done. Um, we've got the barn now uh, for our bison handling system. You know, it's it's calving season. We've had all three of our calves now, which is it's a that's a blessing, and they're doing great. And they've got three good mamas on them. So I love that. This is the most we've had. I know it's only three. Um, and you can look at all these ranches and they have hundreds of those red dogs right now But you know this small bison ranch. We're just happy to have those three and um, the good thing is we've got two heifers and one bull and um, That's just a good feeling now that the herd is growing and we've got two heifers. It's our first two heifers. So um, But all that's going good. I'm so excited to get the barn going as well and get that tin on it and you see the 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 series of of putting that barn up it takes a lot of work but the projects do not stop so what i've got now is you see i've got this from gp rents in davis and that's where we get all of our rental stuff from that means i've got a big project going that means i've got some work to do uh, to put this uh, walk behind um, trencher to use what I'm going to do is, I've got a pole and a meter set up right there. And what that means is I'm going to trench from there 
all the way to the new barn. Um, and then we're gonna go back to this well. So, so here's why we're doing this project. Right here, this is a water well and I've had it tested and it puts out like 30 gallons a minute, which I think is pretty good. So we're gonna get this water well hooked up and we're gonna use it. As once we get this water well going, what we're gonna do is we are going to run trenching and we're gonna run some pipe down into the pasture. And the big project is, is we're gonna set some water tanks. That's, that's something we're gonna set some automatic water tanks that's why we're doing all this and so I'm pumped to get some out in our paddocks which that's the reason is my whole goal is to get some paddocks going out here on the uh, ranch so for the bison so we're gonna divide it up and we're gonna put in some automatic waters so I'm gonna mow this real quick because it is tall and then I'm gonna trench it and that'll be day one and then we'll go from there stay tuned here we go Wasn't that bad didn't like probably 45 minutes when I hit the rock it slowed me down quite a bit but it's amazing uh, um, with the work that you can do when you have really good equipment just called up GP rents and um, Aaron Davis and just say hey I need this and they're like yep got it so and uh, go pick it up and I did this in less than an hour I mean now I'm not going very far probably maybe a hundred feet but it's really not that far at all so Next thing is going to put some conduit down and we'll lay the um, underground uh, wire through oh. here. I am not an electrician. I can do a lot of things, but I'm not very good at that. And I do not feel comfortable with it, but we're going to get it hooked up to our new barn. So this is the first part of this, um, you know, hooking it up as part of our new water system that we're going to have with this old well you know what you might as well use your resources that you have and we've got this old well here that tested great and i'm going to use it hey guys welcome back today we're actually laying the conduit today um i dug the trench yesterday and we're uh we're getting our box set check this out got some help from a local electrician great guy um he's help, he's out here doing all this because like i said i am not an electrician and i do not feel comfortable with this stuff um that's one of the things i i'm really not very good at and uh i don't even want to try but I'm super excited to get this, getting the power to this new barn for the bison handling system. We're gonna put some lights in here. We're gonna put some outlets in here and we'll be set. Um, it's actually starting to feel like uh, you're getting work done, you know, and you got people to help you get stuff rolling. And especially if you don't know what the heck you're doing, you got some good help and get you hooked up. So 
excited to get some power out here. got our box mounted we've got our two inch conduit and then here i'm running the one inch conduit back to we're going from here all the way with the one inch back to the well house so all the power is being ran out of the barn here so this is our main station is right here it's where we're going to power for the lights and some um, outlets here in the barn but we're also going to be able to control the well house we're getting two things done here we're powering our barn and then we are also um, powering this um, well house so we can set up our water stations throughout uh, their pastures for the bison All right, it's looking good. Guys, we almost have power. Just gotta call the electric company and have them come out and get hooked up and we've got power. That's uh, part of this old dairy farm. There's no electricity out here. Um, so anytime we wanna run power, it's off of a generator. And uh, you know, we get by, but now we've got that barn and we're gonna power that, put some outlets in it. <laughs> It's gonna be so nice. We'll have power out here, have some lights. It's gonna be good. So excited. Time to uh, backfill. I uh, don't have my little Kubota tractor with me, but um, we're gonna get to fill in all this dirt since uh, since we're done. We've laid all of our conduit, and uh, time to uh, time to close it all up. Right, Maya? Huh? What do you think? You guys see that got the meter set you know what that means we've got electricity and it's a good thing we do because we've been using a lot of power tools on starting putting up the metal around this barn so it's a good thing we got it and um you know you got to put a lot of hard work into this but having electricity you guys know how important it is uh, i don't know how the people did it way before us but um, we definitely need it out here because this dairy barn didn't have any and so we're bringing we're bringing some power out here to the barn and to the water well, which is gonna be a huge project. Um, so our bison can have automatic water systems. So I just filled these water tanks up for our bison and that's what we've had to do almost daily is fill these up. You know, we've got 13 bison, including the calves. So they're drinking lots of water and it's so hot right now in Oklahoma that they're doing this. So once we get that automatic system established, man, that will be really good and convenient and um, it's good for the bison as well. Plus they should be getting some clean water that's freshly ran through that automated system. Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to be finishing that barn. Hopefully it's a lot more work than I thought it is putting up that sheet metal. I promise you. Um, I've got some help doing it, but um, 
I'm excited to see it. I love the color. I've already put up a couple of sheets and I think it looks awesome. So stay tuned for the for that video of, of finishing the barn. Uh, what a process from this thing being a dairy barn, um, knocking the cinder, wa cinder block walls down to a bison handling facility barn. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed to us, if you're new to us, uh, Hit me up, ask me some questions. Thank you for following us. You can follow us on Facebook and you can follow us on Instagram if you want to uh, shop for hats or um, some new t-shirts I got out. You can check out our website at crosstimmersbison.com. Thank you, guys. I hope you're not rolling in anything dead. Huh? Are you rolling in anything dead? Are you... This guy right here, you can blame everything on him. He's only three years old. No telling what this guy's going to get himself into. But he loves to beat on those gates. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timmers Bison. It's a beautiful morning hanging out here at the Bison. I love just sitting here watching them. Nice and calm. Well, as most of you know, last Saturday, they were not like this. <laughs> last Saturday, I woke up at 7.30 in the morning. My wife um, says, the buffalo are out. And I'm like, what? She showed me a picture. It's a picture from Daniel, uh, my brother-in-law from Arms Family Homestead. And see, Daniel uh, is kind of a... He's a jokester. He likes to play tricks on people and mess with them all the time. That's just how he is, and I've, he's been like that forever. But I looked at the image, and I was like, surely he's joking. I got to zoom in a little more, and those were definitely my ear tags, and I recognized where they were at. They were about three quarters to a mile away from uh, their pasture right here from the bison ranch. And uh, that's not the image that you want to get at 7 30 in the morning by the way the worst part of it is my wife and i and our daughter brooks was in oklahoma city which is an hour and a half away and there's nothing we can do while we're in oklahoma city luckily daniel and my sister dj and my mom and kevin kept the bison contained on the road um, and they figured out a plan and they made a quick decision and luckily where they were at it worked out great and they were able to get them down a main lane um, with two fences. Got a fence on each side, got them down the lane, and we're able to actually put them in a corral. So I just wanna tell you my side of the story and, and just give you a recap of, of how that day went. That is not the day that you ever want to picture. And you know in the back of your mind when you're raising these type of animals, there's always a good chance of that. But here's the crazy part is it's that guy right there, Dunbar. Dunbar Bull. You see how calm he is? You see when we work him, he's really calm. Um, and he's a good bull. He's a nice bull. But if you go back and watch some of my videos, uh, Dunbar likes to beat up stuff. He's uh, just being a bull. And right now it's breeding season. And I think some of these females are in heat. And Dunbar's a little bit on edge. And uh, he had fun with... Uh, our gate system that we have, we have two orange gates and uh, Dunbar likes to hit them. And when he does, it rattles. He likes the, the fact that he can hit that gate with his horns and it rattles and it shakes and it makes noise. Uh, and he, he likes that. He doesn't ever hit anything, any or a post set in the ground or anything like that. You guys know how Dunbar can be. 
he decided to let the whole herd out and uh man he did and so i think they were out at like 6 30 or 7 o'clock on saturday morning our hay guy his name's craig happened to come down the road and he spotted him took a picture of him and sent him to daniel from my family homestead and then daniel sends it to my wife and i so we uh we see the picture we immediately get up we get around and we head south and that's an hour and a half drive so in the meantime kevin has put the bison up and daniel i've put the bison up my family's helped them out so they're in the holding pen a corral well then i get a text message the bison escaped again so not only once but twice have they escaped and uh guess who it was got over there laying down dunbar again So Dunbar pops up a gate, knocks down a gate again, the whole herd gets out. However, they're inside a boundary fence and now they're just in a pasture. Luckily there is no cattle in the pasture. So the bison are just grazing around, doing their thing. And so we show up about 11 or 11.30. We round up our ATVs. We've got two trailers. We've got um, a guy named Marshall Lee who always helps us out. He's got a big gooseneck trailer. And then Kevin went and borrowed another trailer. So we've got two gooseneck trailers ready to go. We've got the family um, and my wife is here and we got the troop ready. Got a game plan. So Daniel and I, we head down with the ATVs. Kind of survey it a little bit, see what they're doing. Luckily they weren't very far from the corral. They were actually laying next to the corral under some shade trees. I try to go out there and round them up by myself, my ATV didn't work and so I had Daniel come over and help me as a flank he was my flank and I was able to push him and luckily or push him back into the crowd all it takes is one bison to kind of lead the path and it's usually one of the dominant ones is to kind of lead the path and they went in the corral locked them up after that got the trailer parked and we were able to kind of sort them into a smaller pen and get ready to load that's where it gets a little tricky and you've seen some of my footage of when we actually worked the bison in our handling system uh, when you corner a bison they act way different it, it changes at that moment and so you know when you put them in that pen that uh that adrenaline starts going that blood starts rushing and they don't like that at all we get in there and we end up getting one load out um i think we got about um, seven loaded in the first load it took us a little bit to do that but we figured out a plan and we got it done got the first load brought them back and I stayed there and I worked the second group. Um, that was the first time I had to actually pick up a calf because those calves are by themselves. Uh. They're normally with obviously mama or another calf. And so they're pretty chill. Uh, but when they're left alone and they're singled out, bison do not like to be singled out. They're very social animals. They get a little skittish, they get very skittish actually. Okay, here's the fun part, calf. I was able to corner the calf and pick him up. Uh, that was a good experience, but at the same time, this whole thing was a bad experience. But um, it was really cool to kind of pick that calf up with Kevin's help. Um, a first time for everything, but not on a good situation. So we got him loaded up and we brought him back. My bison, I'm very lucky, are, are pretty calm. Um, as you can tell in some of the footage, um, other than pinning them up for a loadout and bringing them home. My bison are, are pretty calm compared to a lot of places. They see us all the time, which we, we like spending time with them. Obviously, I'm out here in the pasture with them. That's a good part about this is in the middle of the road, they just didn't take off sprinting. They just slowly made their way down the road because they were lost and confused and didn't know what to do. And luckily, my family responded and made a plan and, and made put them in a safe place. And they handled that well. So I'm proud of the bison. For, for that and, and that all stems from us spending lots of time with them so 
Um, that is one good thing that comes out of this and we're able to, nobody got hurt and the bison were safe. They do get worked up and then there's a lot of high stress. If we can work together, figure out a plan, put it into action, and when something happens, you react. Always in the back of your mind are thinking about them and their stress level because they do get stressed out. And one of the first things, signs you see is the tongue sticking out, panting, uh, hard panting. And when you start to see that, you can tell that they're really stressed out. And we had a couple do that, but um, that's just part of it. That's part of uh, raising cattle um or bison or any other type of livestock when they're put in those situations you're going to stress out um but bison do it a little bit more than others so well thank you guys for watching thank you um for following us i know um this is not uh something that you want to put out there but this is part of it this is part of raising livestock uh goats get out sheep get out cattle get out every day and um I know there's probably a lot of bison people that have maybe been in this situation but and actually lost bison or or people have been hurt so we're just very thankful that nobody was hurt and that all of our bison are healthy and they're back home safely just a couple of learning moments this, this whole process is about learning and we need to bulk up on our gates and um, i think we need to make some adjustments on those What's funny is uh, we built a bunch of new fence and you can see that in some of my videos. We haven't had any problems with the fencing. And a lot of you say, well, that bull needs something to play with. Yes, I need to figure out a toy for him or something for him to beat up on. I'm very lucky. We are very lucky to have a bull that's not honestly that destructive. He's not tearing the fences down. He's not breaking that much stuff. Um, he can flip a gate on a hinge and that's the, obviously those are things that we can fix but if there was another bull in here competing with him um, then we would have some issues we could have some serious issues and you know out in nature and a lot of those big ranches um, that's what bulls do like in Yellowstone those bulls are competing uh, for breeding and to breed some of their females and um, we only need one bull here uh, because we only have seven females and when you have seven females you only need one bull and he can get the job done hopefully and then if he doesn't we'll look at other options thank you guys for watching not our uh, favorite day of raising bison but we're all we're all happy everything went great and the bison are home right here we're uh, or we love having them. Thank you guys for following. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Just a uh, small bison ranch in southern Oklahoma raising the American bison. These awesome animals right here, majestic animals. I like them like this. If you guys want to, you can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook and check out our store. Uh, dropping a new shirt today. If you guys are interested, you can check it out online at crosstimbersbison.com. Thank you guys. I also want to thank my family. I want to thank uh, my mom, my sister DJ, and Daniel, and Kevin for uh, responding early on a Saturday morning, everybody's day off. I want to thank all them for taking care of the bison while we were gone and, and waiting until we got here and, uh, so we could get together and get these bison back home safe. I also want to thank my neighbor, uh, the Hardens, for uh, letting our bison in their pasture and for uh, letting us use their corral. I also wanna thank my wife. I wanna thank her and our baby Brooks for putting up with me through all this and um, for getting up early in the morning uh, when we're gonna hang out, and, you know, try to enjoy something or try to enjoy our weekend and, uh, and responding fast to that. I wanna thank her for that as well and uh, for standing out there with Brooks strapped to her chest and um, watching as all this goes down. And uh, I wanna thank her for that as well.
Where's your feed? Dunbar wants to know where his feed is. Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Thank you guys for watching us. We're gonna switch up our feeding program a little bit. As most of you know, we had our big bulk feeder out. I put it out at the beginning of the summer, um, or very early June. And my goal was to try to push my females, breeding aged females. And what I mean by push, that means, remember bison uh, can breed at two years old. This year, one of my older heifers didn't get bred. Um, she was on the lower age end of my original herd, but she didn't get bred. And so we were basically three for four this year on having calves. And um, that's great. And we love that and we're excited about that. It's the most calves we've had um, in a season. But when I say push, what I mean by that is when they start eating more, they're a little bit more healthy they're still grazing that doesn't change but what's great about bison is that bison will not indulge themselves they will not overeat supplement feed they will only eat so much and then they go back to grazing they'll come back and supplement feed um, and then they'll go back to the pasture and graze they love grass that's what they do that's what they're created for is to graze but when they got that supplement feed they'll come up and they'll snack on it and it keeps them healthy, it keeps them uh, fresh, and it gives them the more opportunity when breeding season comes around, which is now, breeding season is here, um, those females will be ready, and hopefully it boosts their chance of getting pregnant, which is great. Thank you, it is a good morning. Appreciate it, Mr. Rooster. It boosts uh, their metabolism, it kind of gives them that uh, fresh feeling, and it, hopefully it cycles them and gets them going. And plus it helps the bull because uh, he needs to put on a little weight because it's a lot of work for him as well as he starts to chase these females around, court them, and start breeding these females. So it'll be exciting to see the results. We don't know. Um, we'll have to wait until next spring, early summer to see how many babies we get. We should, we have an opportunity if everything goes right and every breeding female gets bred, we would have, I believe, six babies, I think six. So what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna change up our feeding. We're gonna come back to our one ton feeder. I just filled it up at Stillwater Millen. Get one ton of our same feed that we always feed. It's four way blend. Believe it or not, this bulk feeder that I put out in June, we had over five tons of bulk feed in it. Supplement feed, it's the same feed I always feed, the four-way blend. Put it out in early June, and it's August, middle of August, and this thing is completely empty. These guys right here went through all this feed, and two and a half months that shows you right there and I've got 13 and only three of them are baby calves that shows you right there how much feed these animals can go through the great thing about bison is that they don't indulge themselves they don't overeat like cattle do cattle can get into feed or if they get into too much alfalfa hay uh, they'll indulge themselves and they'll eat too much and their stomachs will swell up and, and, and they can die from that obviously but that's the great thing about supplement feeding like a lot of bison people do when you supplement feed you don't have to worry about them overeating okay they're still going to graze and they're still going to do what they normally do but they're not going to overeat where's your feed dunbar wants to know where his feed is i also believe there's some courting going on courting 
you got Dunbar here and I noticed he ran her calf off a while ago. This is Quapaw. She's a four year old cow. She's had two calves now. She's had a heifer and a bull. She had her bull the first year and then she's had a heifer. But this is called courting. Notice he's got her completely separated from the rest of the herd. So he must be following her around. That means she's cycling, she's in heat, and that um, he'll probably breed her pretty soon. So what is courting? So what he'll do with a lot of these females, these breeding aged females, is he will Whichever one is going through heat. So what he'll do with these breeding age females is he will pick the ones that are going through heat. He'll take them and he'll kind of separate him and her from the rest of the herd. Courts them for a couple of days. Um, I, I've even seen him court them up to a week or, or, or longer. And he'll court them, single them out for a while. Then he'll breed them. Once he's bred his cow or heifer that's never had a baby, he'll move on to the next one. And he'll start courting the next one that is in heat. So I'm pretty pleased at how the bulk feeder is held up. Remember I painted the bottom liner in an epoxy uh, just to cover up some of that rust and it held up pretty good. I'm surprised that it did. Uh, some of it's chipping up and that's just because it's, it's, it's used. So. Um, may have to go back over some uh, more of that bottom liner where they actually eat out of but I'm gonna get this out of here and we're gonna get our other bulk feeder set up in the barn so we can uh, get our feed out of it and it's protected from the weather and whatnot. We're gonna get the bulk feeder out of the pasture and that means I can't have the bison in there so I've got to feed them right now to get them out of that pasture because if they hear those orange gates rattling, they hear that chain, they know that they, uh, there's something going on and uh, they're always curious. So I've got to get that bulk feeder out of there to put away for the, for the rest of this year for now. And um, we're just going to do our supplement feeding and feed out of the bucket. So I got to get that out of there. Ones. Okay, I got the bison fed, but uh, I've got to go through these orange gates. And if you guys watched my last video, this is the one that Dunbar flipped open with his horns, knocked it off the hinge. Got the hinges flipped around now. See, it's this top hinge that has to be down. This one can be up so it can swivel. And then, yes, we've got it chained this time. Yeah, we've got it chained. So if Dunbar does happen to break this hinge, yeah, if he happens to break it, which he can, I've, we've seen him do that. We've got an extra chain here just in case. So we've got to go in here and get that bulk feeder out.
So why do we supplement feed? A lot of you guys ask that. If you're, a lot of you are new um, subscribers, or if a lot of you, or a lot of you, are wanting to start your own bison herd, here are some reasons why we supplement feed. One, we have a lot of grass here in southern Oklahoma where this ranch is located. We don't have. They're not on a hundred acres. They're not on a thousand acres. Okay, like a lot of bison are in some places. We don't have that opportunity yet. Maybe someday. That's my goal. However, there is lots of grass and they're grazing and that's great. But guys, bison need a little extra something. I know that they survived for hundreds of years living in the Great Plains and, and living on what they do and what they were raised for and what they're good at and that's grazing. So yes, that's what they need. However, it's not like that anymore. You know, there are some big ranches where these bison can graze for for, for miles and miles, but we don't have that here. There's not a ranch, a lot of ranches like that, even in Oklahoma. There are some, including the tall grass prairie. They can do that because they have a lot of grass. And then they're gonna supplement feed some. I don't know if they do there, but a lot of places have to supplement feed. We also feed, we use hay to feed as well, especially in the winter time when all the grass is, is dormant. We feed because, guys, it keeps them healthy these bison, I, I, I don't, I'm not bragging or nothing, but these bison look good. And even uh, my vet, Doc Parsons, um, who comes and, and sees them twice a year and, and uh, who I stay in contact with and who's helped me through this process, who I bought bison from, tell me that these bison look good. And guys, he's been in the business for a long time. And so to hear that from Doc Parsons is awesome. Um, so we try to keep our animals healthy. We want them to breed. And we want them to reproduce, which is part of this business. We want to grow the bison herd. And to be able to do that, these animals got to be healthy. I don't want to look out here and see these bison all skinny. Okay, the, Their coat won't be good. Their health won't be good. And they just need some minerals because they're not roaming out on hundreds or thousands of acres where they can get lots of grass. And they're moving as the seasons change they're moving and grazing as well on different parts of the country. Don't have that anymore. We don't feed ours to make them fat. We don't feed ours to make them where we're gonna slaughter them, okay? You can do that, and a lot of people do do that, but we're not gonna do that, okay? Um, we may use supplement feed to finish some of our animals once we have enough to sell for, for uh, market, for meat, but we don't have that capability yet. They're still grazing. They're still eating grass, but they just need those extra nutrients so that they can feel full and they can be healthy and we keep them happy. That's the other thing. You keep the bison happy, they won't tear your fences down. Knock on wood. But if you have a bull, watch out because, and make sure your hinges are down, okay? Because they will flip the gates. Just make sure you do that, okay? Thank you guys for watching us. Um, if you haven't, subscribe to us. Small Bison Farm in Southern Oklahoma, raising the American bison. You can follow us on Facebook, you can follow us on Instagram, and you can check out our website at crosstimbersbison.com. Thank you guys. I'm gonna show you a little sneak peek too. We've, uh, we've been putting metal on the barn, and it looks good. Be stay tuned for one of my upcoming videos of finishing a barn to cover our bison handling facility. I love the way it looks and it's it's crazy. It's like coming together now and it it uh it's actually got some shade. You can be in the barn and there's no sun on you. It's pretty nice. Stay tuned guys. You guys wondering where your feed trailer is? <laughs> well, see you later. Okay. Check you later. I've got the trough in the back of my truck. I've got to take out in the pasture. I normally don't drive my truck out in the pasture. That's because bison can, uh, they like to rub up against uh, 
the exterior of your truck, ah. lights, against your mirrors, and they can bust stuff up and they can scratch the heck out of your vehicle. So I don't take my truck in here ah. often, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it in here now. Hopefully ah. they don't come up while I'm in here. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So I got something new today for Dunbar and the whole herd. I got a new feed trough. It's gonna be a good test. Here's why. A lot of you have seen how Dunbar is, especially in the middle of breeding season. He likes to beat on troughs, uh, knock gates off the hinges. He likes to make a lot of noise. He likes to just to beat on stuff. He's just being a bull and uh, He's in the middle of rut. We're in the middle of breeding season. So, a lot of you have made comments on what type of color the feeder should be. Maybe paint it or paint the gates a different color and see if he won't um, mess with them as much. I think I've come to a conclusion. I don't think it's the paint color. I think he, he truly just enjoys the fact that he can knock the plastic liner out of these feeders that I'm not gonna buy anymore. If you're wanting to start your herd or you're a new bison producer, this is what feed trough not to get. You can see daylight through there. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's from his horn. This is what Dunbar really likes, and this is why I think it's noise. This makes a lot of noise when he hits this thing, and I think he loves, he's completely knocked this, he knocks it completely out, almost daily, and we have to put it back in here. You can see the old screw holes where it was. He likes to take it off, and he likes to hit this metal frame. It makes a lot of sound and I really think that Dunbar really likes this. Here, this is a solid feeder here. Okay. He never, he never hits on this. Dunbar will never mess with this. It's solid. I know it doesn't have any color. This one is kind of a reddish orange color. We've even had to chain these uh, feeders down because Dunbar will carry them off. Um, I did a video over that, um, I think last year or this past fall because uh, he had a lot of fun with it and even threw it out in the middle of the pasture and I had to go get it. This is the feed trough not to get, I can tell you. You need a solid feed trough. One of the things that you can get is you can get the concrete um feed troughs i don't think they're that expensive however wherever you put them that's where they're probably going to stay for a long time we're not ready to do that yet so that's why i haven't bought those feet that's why i have not bought concrete feed bunks yet so i am in the middle of converting from not not these troughs but the full metal troughs solid one piece metal troughs is what i'm I'm slowly converting to. I'm just not gonna buy, go buy a whole bunch because they are expensive. I'm gonna slowly get there. And we've been feeding them since we took the bulk feeder out. We've been feeding them by hand using our five gallon buckets daily. And I noticed that we need more feeders. We've got 13 bison and the calves like to get in there too. And so we like to spread them out. So here's our feeding system. So cuts right through here. So we've only got three here, and then over by where the new barn is, we've got one there and one there. So we have a total of five feed troughs right now, but you have a couple of queen bees. You've got Dunbar. Uh, you've got some mamas, part of those queen bees, and they like to have their own feed trough, and that's part of the hierarchy system um, that these bison have in their social system. And so a lot of the young ones, 
they're kind of shoved to the side and I don't like that they need to get feed just as much as the adults and if any of them need feed it's those young heifers especially that uh, I'll hope to uh, get bred this year so I got another trough I'm gonna go ahead and set it up here in our line and they're spread out pretty pretty distant I'll kind of have to keep an eye on it and make sure some of the young uh, bison we have are still eating just as much as the adults we'll see how it goes I know it's red but I love uh, that it's coated it's painted and I think it prevents that rust um, from settling in for a, for a while so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes in the meantime with uh, with this feeder Okay, we've got our other feed bunk set. That means we have a total of six feed bunks, feed bins, feed troughs, whatever you wanna call them. We've got six now, and uh, they are spread out, you know, I'd say probably at least 10 feet apart. And uh, we like to put them up against the post from our uh, exterior corral. We like to set them up against there, and uh, cause you don't want the bison getting on the other side of it. Um, you just want them feeding here or another thing you can do a lot of cattle people do this is you can put it out here I could line them out in the middle if I wanted to um, but here's the thing is I don't we try to reduce getting in the pen with them as much as possible so we just simply reach over we reach over the fence to feed the bison here and like kevin my stepdad he feeds for me a lot and so just to make it easy to prevent people from getting in here in case my mom has to feed or my wife or somebody a family member has to feed they can just simply reach over and feed them this way if we had them lined out here you've got to have a feed truck um, with a feeder on the back of it or an atv or something like that to feed to feed them but maybe someday we can do that with a feed truck if we um, grow which is what I want to do I want to be able to grow and grow the herd and maybe someday we'll be able to do that but right now we don't need to plus it's just safer which is the main thing one of the other things is we feed our bison right now since we took the bulk feeder out they're not eating as much but there is still a lot of grass left and the bison are still grazing but we feed our bison about two to three pounds per head per day and we can kind of balance that out. You can feed them in the mornings all at once. You can feed them in the evenings all at once. Or you can split that up and do some in the morning and some in the evening. That's kind of our magic range is the two to three pounds uh, per head of our four-way blend that we use. Since I got my truck out here in the pasture, I don't know where the bison are. I kind of want to go see them. I'm a little nervous to drive my truck out there. Ah. I usually just take the ATV, so I may chance it just to see where they are and see if I get them rounded up. I'll get them up here and we'll feed them. All right, I found the bison down in the bottom pasture. You guys hungry? Woo! -hoo! No response. Well, guys, I have an announcement to make. Um, I know it may be a little late uh, to announce this, but I had some 
people, it, it made me think of it. I had some some followers uh, reach out to me and ask how school was and how football was. Well, um, currently I am not coaching and teaching. I'm actually taking a year off uh, from teaching and coaching. And um, it was a big move for my wife and I, our, our little family. I am uh, being a stay-at-home dad. That's number one. I am being a cabin boy, taking care of our our cabins. And in case you didn't know, we have a uh, uh, 10 rental cabins in Sulphur, Oklahoma. It's called Rocky Point Cabins. And then also, I get to take care of these amazing um, majestic animals. And so, uh, I just got really busy um, with, with the whole balance of everything. And we're running a family business now. You've got the bison. And then you add a baby to the mix. Uh, it gets really busy really fast. And so, we made the decision uh, for me to stay at home. My wife still works. Um, but I try to take care of everything else and it's been really good. I, I know COVID has been hard on a lot of families. It's been hard on our country and I'm very thankful that it's been a blessing for us in relation to raising baby Brooks and being able to spend a lot of time with her. Couldn't be more blessed and thankful for that as well. Couldn't be more thankful uh, to raise such a cool animal. Such an amazing animal. Still, I'm always learning from these guys and I really love it and enjoy it. And I'm lucky to have good animals. They've been really good to us. Minus the time Dunbar let everybody out. But other than that, we'll forgive him. Hopefully he doesn't ever do it again. We've really enjoyed it and my family uh, has loved this experience so far. And so thank you guys for following us. Thank you for subscribing to us. If you have, if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe to us. Uh, we just enjoy raising the uh, American bison right here, America's mammal. Just stop and watch them for a little bit and um, just soak it all in because these animals at one time, one time, almost completely vanished from our planet and we're lucky to still have them today. I'm going to do my part to try to get those numbers up. It may take a long time and I'm just uh, about this big on the whole perspective of raising bison but we can do it by raising one bison at a time and I believe that and so just thankful for that don't run me off please I ain't gonna be in your way Hey, get off my truck. Peaches, get off my truck. This guy right here, I made a toy for him today. Hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Thank you for watching us. What's up, buddy? What's up, big dog? If you're a new subscriber, this is Dunbar, John Dunbar. Yes, I, uh, I named uh, our main bull here from a, a movie that I grew up watching and I absolutely love, and one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner. Yes, I, I named that old goofball here uh john dunbar after uh kevin costner's major role in that movie as lieutenant john j dunbar 
right here. So this video is for you guys with the request of many, many ideas and opinions. I am putting together a toy for Dunbar. A lot of y'all have probably watched my recent video. If you haven't, go check it out. Dunbar, he's the, uh, he's the man. He's the dominant bull out here. He's three years old and he's a, he's a really good bull. He's very calm. He's got two young bulls in the pasture with him, but they're uh, yearlings and they're not much competition for Dunbar. He needs something to play with. I've had a lot of opinions. I had a lot of requests. Put something in the pasture so Dunbar can play with. Give him something to occupy him, especially during um, the breeding season right in the middle of the rut. He can get a little tense and he, uh, besides loving on his ladies, you know, he's got to show that dominance a little bit. That could be rubbing on a tree branch. It could be, you know, rolling on the ground. It could be beating up a feed trough. It could be flipping gates off the hinges. He can do it all. Good thing is, he's nice to us. He needs something in the pasture with him. So I got a really good idea because I'm going to put something together today that I think will work pretty well. And it has to be something that makes a lot of racket, makes a lot of noise. Well, I'm going to put this together today and I'm going to put it on the pasture and uh, he'll be able to make a lot of racket. I promise you. All right, buddy. I got this 50 gallon barrel here. I wasn't for sure what was in it. I kind of got to looking at it and I'm, it says here, super heavy duty motor oil. So it says here, it's got this statement, Petroleum Corporation. Okay, it's got this, looks like a chain, sprocket. I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know much about it, okay? But this is what I'm gonna use to make a toy for Dunbar to put in the pasture. Problem though. I don't know if you can hear what's in there, but there's apparently some motor oil stuff still left in here. I'm not gonna get the torch out quite yet to cut the lid off of it. I don't think that'll be a good idea. Torch, motor oil, probably not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my drill. I'm gonna drill a hole in it first and uh, drain this oil out before I start to um, get the cutting torch on it and start welding on it. I'm gonna drain the motor oil out of it first. Then I'm going to take the lid off. I'm gonna throw some metal in it, some scrap metal that we have around here. And uh, then I'm gonna weld the top back on. I'm gonna put a chain through it, on it. I really hadn't decided quite yet. And then I'm gonna hang it in a tree. <laughs> uh, we'll see what you guys think. Mainly, you know what? It's really not what we think. It's what Dunbar thinks, and we'll see if it works. Hanging from a tree, be the best toy for Dunbar. We'll see. I can't believe I'm doing this. I never thought I'd throw toys in the pasture with my bison, um, <laughs> like a pet, but. Got an old 2,4-D container here, and I'm gonna lift this so we can drain it. Environmentalist right there. Just taking care of nature. So one of the reasons I just drilled a hole in it is, I don't know exactly, this is super rusted. Um, I don't know a lot about these 55 gallon drums, but um, I'm sure this is the way that you get it out is through here. You can drain it. Obviously that's how they filled it, but there's a lot more than I thought coming out of here. All right, now that I've saved the planet, ultimately from old motor oil. 
I filled two of these suckers up. I had no idea that uh, there was that much in there, and I got a little bit. Of, uh, I got a little bit in this container here, but filled two of these up. These are two gallon um, containers. Actually, I'm wrong. Two and a half gallon containers. We've got her drained. We saved the earth. Now I'm gonna cut this actually off, and then I'm going to stuff the metal back in there put a couple of holes for the chain to go through and then I'm going to weld it back on and then shoot we're we're getting close don't want to ruin my new shirt if you guys haven't checked this out go to crosstimbersbison.com you can get a gray one or you can get a brown one I personally like the brown one it's a pretty cool color it reminds me of those guys in case you don't know what this is this is a welding shirt it's Kevin's old welding shirt Wrangler, I like these broken ones. This is a farm shirt right here. Of course, I have the nicest gloves ever. It's gonna work. Well, you know what? Sometimes you just need a little help. So I didn't really know how to get the top off. These little dudes off. They were kind of rusted. Kevin showed up, told him what I was gonna do. And he said, just take those off and you can put the metal down in it. I know. Sometimes you just gotta have a little, have a little, uh, little help or somebody else's opinion. Get another view. Get another set of eyes on it. So, because we got those off, thank you, Kevin. Um, what we're gonna do now is I don't have to cut this off with the torch necessarily. So what I'm gonna do is I've got some scrap metal. I'm gonna put in there. Then what I'm gonna do is actually. After I get all the little scrap metal in there, I'm going to run the chain through there and I'm going to cut a hole out with the torch on this end and run that chain through here and that chain will be hanging out up here and we can um, hang it from a tree. Let's go find some scrap metal. Good place to always look, the welder. There's always scrap metal in here. These are perfect. Gonna make lots of noise. Heck yeah. Oh, got some round tubing. Got some square tubing. Looks like some one inch. Some more round tubing. Looks like a great piece of pipe. Three quarter inch tubing. Thicker. Angle iron. An old bolt. Rebar. Cheap crap. An old bit. Oh, this will work. I hope it makes a lot of racket. I hope it makes a lot of racket. So, um, we're turning that scrap metal into something useful, hopefully. So, found a use for it. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut a hole with the torch right here to match up to the other side of the barrel because there's another hole right here actually going to run the chain through it it's going to match up to this side We got both holes cut. I used the pre-existing hole um, that was on the barrel. I cut this one out, cut the other end out, and now I'm gonna run the chain through here. I'm gonna go all the way through. We're gonna clip it. We're gonna go hang it in a tree. Could be a challenge. Took me a minute, but I got it. Got our chain running through here. It was tough getting it out the other side, but luckily uh, I got a hold of it. Still see some smoke coming out of there. All right, so I got some clips. May have to get some heavy duty or clips. We'll see how it goes. Got clips on both ends. We're gonna hang this from a tree. I'll load it up. Let's go out in the pasture.
Now we just gotta find a limb. So there's the corral. There's the silos. I think this will work. It's called a blackjack oak tree. It's a very dominant tree through this part of the Oklahoma. It's part of the cross timbers region. I think we've got our spot, we've got our limb, reaching distance. We're gonna get it going. Well, there it is, guys. There you have it. Dunbar's new toy, homemade right here um, from just leftover ranch stuff, leftover old dairy farm stuff I found around here. The only thing that I bought was a new chain to put up here and some clips. That was it. Got it hung up in our oak tree. This is our uh, blackjack oak tree here. But uh, now the real question is, is Dunbar gonna like this? So they're not out here right now. This is chill time for them because I'm out here um, kind of early in the morning. So um, I'm gonna see if I can round him up and get him over here because I really wanna see if he actually plays with it. I actually wanna see how he responds to it. And um, I just wanna be here to see it. So let's, uh, let's go see if we can find his big butt and get him over here with some cubes. See if the bucket gets their attention. Oh yeah. Little peaches. Here they come. Now we just gotta get them to follow us. Here comes big boy in the back. That's who we're looking for, that's who we want. Come on. There's the boss. Come on, we're not, we're pretty close. Come on. Okay, that one's falling. And I'm pulling up. There we go. Hey.
takes his one. There they come. Woo! Slow down, big boy. Come on, Dunbar. Let's see what you think. We're super close. Come on. Eleanor. He's not sure yet. All right, so no reactions yet. That's okay. I saw, I've noticed a, here recently, he's lost a lot of his um, aggressiveness here just in the past couple weeks. He still flips that one uh, feed trough over, rips the plastic container out of it. Um, so I'm not surprised that he he didn't hit the barrel, but we were gonna give it a shot anyways. We got, we got the herd around here, but just like normal, just like they always do, they gotta check it out first. Of course, they're probably smelling some interesting smells. There's nothing on the outside of that container. Um, you know, obviously, I, I, I try to keep all the motor oil inside of it as possible and none on the outside. Let's just give it a little time and, uh, you know, hopefully he turns it into a toy. Maybe not now, but sometime later he will. Thank you guys for watching. Unfortunately, this guy was not in the mood to play i don't know what his problem is i guess he's chilling out a little bit but when i do get that footage i will promise you a I don't know if you can see what these, there's still flies on her. She's like, get back. You can see that, see that tail wagging? Those flies off. Yep. So what I'm excited about as part of these minerals, what I'm excited about is they have a mineral block that has garlic in it. I've heard garlic being in some of these mineral blocks before. Oh. Whoa. So that was Mama running off her last year's calf, Chaske, our first born bull. That was interesting. Hey guys, it's Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back. Thank you guys for watching our videos. And if you haven't, subscribe to us and follow us along. We're a small, ranch in southern oklahoma raising the american bison i'm really pumped and excited i i've got something to show you 
as you can tell here on our utility trailer I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna show you guys what's inside I'm really excited about some new products not only products for just livestock deer sheep goats we don't have all those well we have some sheep you can hear every now and then we do have some deer you can see in some of my videos but they actually have products for bison check this out so what I did is a gentleman reached out to me from Redmond Minerals located in Utah and he was talking to me about trace minerals and I told him that we use trace mineral blocks that's something we don't really talk about in my videos you you may not even see them in my videos we have a couple of trace mineral blocks out in the pasture but the trace minerals it's really not that big of a deal I haven't made it a priority we always try to have them out just so our bison can get those extra minerals that they need well gentleman reached out to me and offered to send me some products to try I'm really pumped because these products a lot of these products what I think is in here is designed just for bison and I'm, this is something that you don't see that often a bison are kind of left out of the situation there's a lot of minerals and there's a lot of supplements um, for cattle pigs sheep goats those typical livestock animals but bison is really not ever included in that but now these guys have bison products and I'm really excited to try them and see how it goes let's look into it dad gum I didn't know he's gonna send me this much stuff he said, I'm gonna send you some stuff. I want you to try it out. Man, that's a lot of stuff. Now I gotta unload it. I gotta have to, I gotta find a spot in the barn to unload all this now. Kind of anxious to see what's down there, and see what's in this thing. But so far, it's pretty cool. This is so cool. I'm so excited. I'm about out of breath because I was unloading a bunch of it. But guys, take a look at this. Bison. We got bison product right here. A premium mineral mix designed just for bison. I know this is one of their most popular. They have a bison 90 and then they have another one. They have two products for bison and you guys can check this out online. So you got bison 90, which is this loose mineral right here. And then they also create a Redmond Bison 418. And um, I'm not really sure the difference yet, but um, I, I do have some studying to do. What I just wanna see is these bison get some good minerals in them. And I wanna see how they react to, I don't know a ton about these products yet, but I am pumped to figure out what these minerals can do for our bison. I know that this company would not send me these products if they didn't believe in what they have. Okay, so we got some goat product here. So if you guys didn't know, I showed sheep. Grandmother and my stepdad, Kevin, they still raise sheep on the other side of town. They've raised sheep for a long time. You can go back and watch one of my videos about why I thought FFA is important or why I think FFA is important. So you've got goat products here. Can also be used for sheep, a uh, goat mineral mix, so here's a product I'm excited about right here. Meant for all livestock. You got sheep, you got pigs. Hey, even little chickens. Goats, and then cattle. And then you can go ahead and throw bison in there as well. So you've got loose mineral, and then you have the block. So check this block out. This block right here is a natural block with garlic. And I've been picking up this these products and I smell like garlic you guys cooked in the kitchen before like you're slicing onions or sliced garlic gets on your hands starts to I mean you smell it garlic is strong this stuff is strong I, I smell it all over my shirt but what this garlic is supposed to do is keep the flies away it's supposed to um, prevent flies 
ticks, any type of pest um, or insect that can get on these animals, garlic is supposed to shed that away. I mean, it's, I guess you know, that garlic is used to uh, keep away the vampires, right? Uh, those flies are vampires to our bison, and so we want to try to keep them off of them as possible. A gentleman talked to me about this using garlic, and I'd heard this before, and I'd heard people had used garlic before to repel the flies. I can't just go rub garlic on my bison, right? Can't do that. But there's a product right here um, that I'm really excited to try and to see if that really works because yes, I still have my rub and the bison have been rubbing on it. They like to rub up against that or pipes or trees, but I, I have watched them rub on my rub uh, that I treated. I've treated twice now as a flower repellent. Now you've got a mineral with garlic, something that we consume as humans um, out here for bison to try to repel the flies. And we're still in that season right now. Yeah, we're approaching fall, but it's still hot here in Oklahoma. We've had a lot of rain and the flies are still going to be here for a while. So really anxious to see how these products work. Just regular mineral salt here, all loose mineral. So you've got a natural block with garlic and then you have just a natural block here. High in calcium, obviously your salt, copper, iodine, iron, manganese, zinc, potassium, sulfur, yes, sulfur. For all classes of livestock, for all classes of beef, dairy, cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, and horses. So I'm going to put out the first block that we're going to do, that we're going to try. It's the natural block um, with garlic. We're still in fly season, so I'm going to use that one first. And I'm going to leave the other one out there, the just regular good old plain Jane trace mineral block that I, that I always get. Um, pretty common mineral block, and we're going to see how that goes. In the meantime, I'm going to get some trace mineral containers so that um, once we go through this testing trial of, this, of these minerals from Redmond, um, I'll start putting that loose mineral out. I do have some trace mineral block containers, some plastic containers. Um, my dad gave me, he was using for, uh, he was putting blocks out for his deer. And so I'm going to use those. I've been putting my trace mineral blocks in them. I'm going to put the garlic out. I'm going to see how the flies do with the bison. Uh, every time the bison come up to me or, I, or the, where I'm feeding them, I always like to check them and see how the flies are doing. You gotta be super quiet because when bison hear gates, they know something's going on. So if you wanna get out in the pasture with bison without them knowing it, you gotta be quiet when they open the gates because when they hear that rattle, they, they show up real quick and I can't get in the pasture with them. Your label off so here's a regular trace mineral block guys to be honest with you this mineral block has probably been out here for probably at least three to four months not even kidding you can see some of the lick marks here it is not much bigger than the mineral block I'm about to put out some water that's from just water erosion so three or four months block right here we're gonna set the other right next to it. What's also amazing to me is that you can take natural products from Mother Earth, mine them out, whatever you call it, and you can take those minerals raw from deep down in the earth, take them and turn it into this. I think it's amazing. Obviously that's where we get our salt from and have for many, many years is from the earth and a, and a lot of our minerals come from what mother nature has provided but the fact that they can take it put it in here put garlic in it and make this compact mineral block i think it's really cool don't get me wrong about trace mineral blocks this here the one that's been out for a long time use trace mineral blocks i mean 95 percent of these mineral blocks is salt okay sodium chloride nacl2 
a little chemistry for you. Most of these mineral blocks are salt anyways. I'm not dogging on this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a test trial to this. I'm really anxious to see how these blocks do. We'll see how it goes. I, I wanna see, first of all, do they like the flavor? And um, we'll see how fast this goes. So, mineral block on the right, been there for three or four months. Mineral block, day one. We'll see how it goes. Which one's it gonna be? Let's see what the bison think. Is this the other male right here? No. Here's what I do know. I may not know a lot about these minerals, but I'm gonna learn a bunch. But what's important, guys, is that we're taking care of our bison and we're giving them as many minerals, whatever we need, to make sure our bison are super healthy. We wanna make sure our bison are as healthy as they can be. I wanna raise the best herd that I can. And um, sorry I'm out of breath. I've been moving this stuff around. So anyways, no matter what, as long as it's safe and it's good for these bison, we'll take care of them the best we can. Can't go wrong with that. Well, it seems like they already like it, uh, which is pretty nice. That's a good feeling. Um, they put that block out there and immediately when they come up there, I, I noticed that they had that they had that nose up and, and they came straight towards it. And Eleanor and a couple of the calves came up there and Eleanor seemed to love it. The others, not all of them came up to it, but give it a little time once they figure out what's new in their pasture i'm anxious to see how long it takes them compared to that uh just that salt mineral block compared to the new one with garlic in it we'll see and um, i want to see the results uh if it can keep some of the flies away as we start to approach into fall that mineral block is a seasonal mineral block if i'd have had them earlier in the summer i'd have been able to put that out um, which would have been a little bit better. We're getting towards the end when it's starting to cool down and we won't see as many flies as we normally would. But I'm excited to, to also use uh, some of those other products like that Bison 90 Mineral. And I love evenings like this. The bison always come down to this bottom pasture and they always come down here to uh, settle for the night. And um, it's really pretty with the sun coming down right here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe to us. Very lucky. Thank you for uh, Redmond uh, Minerals out of Utah uh, for reaching out to me and wanting to try a new product. What I'm really happy about is the fact that they created something for bison. You see lots of, lots of minerals and lots of supplements uh, created for all livestock, but bison are, are kind of left out. 
and that's okay. But Redmond is one of the companies that is reaching out there and doing something a little bit different and creating something for bison. I don't know if a lot of bison producers use this, but one thing that I focused on when I did a little bit of research on it is the conception rates were higher from uh, bison producers that did use the Redmond products. And conception rate is important. This year we were one baby short from one of our younger heifers that didn't have a baby and that was Peaches. Peaches didn't have a baby. And um, so you can't go wrong by giving the bison more minerals and give them a, more of an opportunity. And you can get a natural product from Redmond. Can't wait to see the results of this and how the bison react to uh, the, the Redmond minerals and that salt block. Here they all come. They think I got food with me, but I don't. Thank you guys for watching us. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. You can check us, uh, check some gear out. Got some hats and some shirts out. Hey guys, welcome to another live chat. This is our second live chat. Um, so it's uh, it's still hot out, you know, it's only 545. The bison aren't too active right now, but this is, uh, I'm just coming to check on the herd. I know they're, uh, they're just chilling right now, but this is a good time to see them. So, um, hey Steve. I thought this was probably the best way for you guys to to see the herd. I know you've probably missed them. I got a lot of projects going, so uh, there's a lot going on, but I'm just hanging out in the ATV and uh, wanting to see these bison. Hey, Alex from Cali. Sunshine. Hey. Hey, guys. Well, I've uh, I've been working on the barn today, and uh, it's, it's uh, very hot and uh, I need a little break. So I'm gonna come and check on the bison, see how the calves are doing. I ain't got to see them that much. Hey, from Minnesota, Willis from Georgia. Hello, guys. Connecticut, Jennifer, hey. Cindy Meyer from Washington State. Man, you guys are far. Vicki, hey, I, I know that name from Fort Worth. Joy from Wisconsin. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for joining us. Um, so in the middle of the day, these animals are typically, um, they're laid up in one of our old dairy barns up there. Um, but um, it's not too, too bad today, so, um, and uh, they're just hanging out. I don't know how to do the super chat. That's terrible. I don't know. Um, how do you guys do the super chat? Tell me how to do it. I'm terrible. I I've never actually done a super chat, but you have to tell me how to do this. But anyways, um, so you guys want to get up closer to see the bison, see the babies at least. You got three, they're getting so big. Maybe a little loud in the ATV. You guys still with me? We're kind of out here a little bit. Hey there, Reba from Maryland. United Kingdom. Uh, it's good to have you guys join us in from this far. Okay, we're back. Sorry, I know we're down here in the out in the out here pretty far. Um, I'm going to get a little bit closer to the calves. I'm kind of being a little distant. We've got one of the, this bull here is a yearling bull. He's just one of my uh, first ones. He knows what I was, he knows I've got some cubes. Let me grab some cubes. <clears throat> All right, here you go.
usually Dunbar, my bull is the is the first one up here. I'm gonna flip this around so you guys can see this a little more. Yes, the famous cake, that's right, Miriam. Uh, three quarter inch cattle cube. Probably wondering why I throw some of them on the ground it's because some of them do not come up to me yet. And that's okay. There's the beast right there. Dunbar, the man. I am monetized, but I can't. I don't know why. He loves, I've got three baby calves right there. They're there. You guys know the fan favorite here is, this is Eleanor. There's the babies. Hey Bruce from North Carolina. And this is Eleanor, she loves to get up close to me. Here you go. There's your close up of the calves. You can see this one right here is the oldest one. He's already starting to turn, or she, sorry. She's already got some uh, hijacky from Pennsylvania. Uh, you can already see some of the red starting to leave. Little heifer. The fly rub is working pretty good, Bruce. Thank you for asking. Um, I've noticed I, every time I've seen them out there, because I've been working around the barn a lot, I've been seeing them rub on it. They they really like to do that. And um, so, uh, ped, Pedmo about, mon uh, I, my, my videos are monetized, but I don't know why I can't do a super chat. I think I'm eligible for it, but anyways, uh, golly, I forgot what I was saying, but it, this can be a little distracting. There's a lot going on right here in one place. <laughs> I, uh, thank you for asking, what are the names of the calves? I, uh, I don't have names for them yet. I, <laughs> I'll only keep up two of them, but because they're heifers, I'll, I'll be getting rid of the bulls, but you don't want to get name them all too, um, and get too close to them because uh, some of them will not be here for too long.
to be careful. I usually have somebody with me to kind of keep an eye on my back. This is my, uh, this is my partner right now is, uh, is Maya. She's my lookout. I don't think she does a very good job. So, uh, PCB, at what age will you sell the bulls? Um, so, I, I, uh, the prime time to sell bulls is two years. And here's the reason why is, uh, you sell the bulls at two years. One, they're, they should be about a thousand pounds, which is a good carcass, uh, harvesting weight to get slaughtered is what, uh, what that is prime time for. And then also, so, uh, uh, you've got to make a decision by two years because by the time they're two, you know, some people ask me, do you, do you use and you do not. It's because by the time they're two, you've got to make a decision. Are you going to use them for breeding or are you going to use them for, um, for slaughter, for meat? Yeah, uh, Steve, you asked, I assume your bulls are worth more than, than or worth more than as depends on how good the bull is. If you've got a good breeding bull, you can, uh, oh, then real quick. Maya, you ready? It depends on the breeding bull, how good he looks. Uh, it also just depends on the market. Uh, the market is down just a little bit right now, obviously, from the conditions that we're in. You gotta move with the herd, sorry. Oh, that one taking a crap, mother nature right there. Uh, enriched refuge, uh, do you sell bison meat cut wrapped? Yes, it is. Oh, it's frozen in a package. I don't sell bison meat yet. Uh, that's one of the future things. It just takes a long time to um, grow your animals and grow your herd so you're able to do that. You do not castrate bulls at all. You don't have to because by the time they're two, which is the breeding age, you, you either sell them uh, for breeding uh, to a place or you uh, take them to get cat. Uh, you take them to uh, get slaughtered. Uh, as far uh, Anna asked if you're planning on raising them for food consumption or sell to markets. I'll eventually, I want to have enough uh, to sell the meat uh, at markets and for, uh, to direct uh, customers. Um, I think that's a, that'd be a good start is to be able to sell the meat for that purpose. Um, and then also for breeding as well. DJ Arms, sister. Are these the same bison that are shown on the on the show Yellowstone? I love that show. I think we all do. Our whole family loves that show. These are not the same. That's a good question, actually. Hold on a second. I'm moving. We're moving with a hurt. Got him right.
Now, how cool is that? That is cool, isn't it? Isn't that one of the neat things about these animals? I got them running with the ATV. You guys just got to push them a little bit. Isn't that fun? Um, okay, so... Here we go. Let me go back a little bit. So, my sister asked me if these are the same as Yellowstone, uh, as the show Yellowstone, Kevin Costner. No, they're not. But, anyways, I love that show, and um, those bison, I don't know where they come from. Surely they come from their area. I know that they, uh, that is filmed in Montana and in Utah as well, so that's a good question. But, um, anyways, uh, the bison in Yellowstone are a little bit better than mine. That's why you see the accidents happen. People, those animals are way different than mine. Okay, you see me up close to mine, that's because they see lots of people. Um, they see me and they see a lot of, of, of my family in the pen with them. That's how they were raised. They were raised with people around them. And uh, I can feed them cubes. And overall, that helps us out tremendously that the fact that these bison are calm. Because when we work them twice a year, if they're crazy or we bring uh, people out that want to see them, it can get really nuts. So you just gotta, it's nice to have these animals nice and calm. I'm gonna flip it around so you guys can see them. They, uh, Linda, uh, how long do they live? They can live up to like 20 to 25 years, supposedly. Therese asked, how many bulls do I have? I've got actually three bulls out here. One mature bull, which is Dunbar, back here in the back, and I've got two yearlings. Bruce asked, how long do the calves nurse before being weaned? Six months. Six to seven months is kind of the average uh, number there, the kind of the time. David, bison tastes like chicken. I don't think so. I don't know what kind of bison you're eating, man. It's way better than chicken. You just got to have it cooked right. The herd always stays together, PCB. Always. They're social animals. Sally, um, Asked uh, about a lot large bison herd. Um, Northwest Trek, Eatonville. They said the calves were orange as the wolves, but don't see. Don't see. No, these color, I call them cinnamon. Um, they're kind of a red color like a baby deer uh, without the dots. I don't know about wolves. Hey, uh, so it's so hot out here. I was just about to answer a question about it being hot. It's so hot out here that my phone overheated. And so that's why it died. I really apologize, guys. Not crazy. Ooh, flip this around. All right, let's see here. Try to answer some of these questions for you. Uh, we have the bison on a total of about maybe 20 to 25 acres. Um, uh, Miriam, thank you for asking that. Does does bison taste close to beef, Jennifer uh, Wilgus? Yes, uh, I think they do. I believe they do. It tastes uh, it's a little bit more lean, um, not as much fat. Uh, with bison, you have to um, you've got to really like. You can overcook it very fast because it's so lean. Jackie, I've seen a video of a bison charging a girl fell and laid very still. Um, is that what you do? Well, let me tell you something. 
I've never been to Yellowstone. I know the bison are pretty far from me. Let me answer some of these questions. I had to hide in the shade because it's so hot. But, um, so, so you're talking about that incident that happened at Yellowstone. I, uh, I don't know exactly um, uh, what happened. I saw the video of it, but I, all I can say is that, first of all, you shouldn't even be out there, okay? Those bison, like I said earlier, are way different than my bison. And um, you just don't mess with them. They, they, they may see the visitors, but here's the thing, what's going on in Yellowstone right now and in places like uh, Custer and Wind Cave and those big places, those big parks up there, here's what's going on. It is breeding season, okay? And the, these animals... When it's breeding season, everybody's kind of on edge, and especially those bulls. Dunbar is nothing compared to those bulls up there. Those bulls are very, there's a lot of mature bulls up there, and there's a lot of them at Yellowstone that are competing for, for the top prize, and, and they're trying to breed uh, as many cows as they can, but they've got competition. Dunbar doesn't have competition. That's why he's not very, um, he's not very aggressive, and he's been nice to us, so first thing you got to do is you can't even be in the pasture with those animals. Uh, that was their first mistake. And laying down, no, uh, I think probably the best thing to do was to get your butt out of there. But just, um, you can avoid those things. You can control those things. You can't control those bison. Remember that. Um, but you can control yourself and that stay in the car. Um, uh, and you can take pictures from the car, but don't get out and don't go try to visit those bison, Okay. Um, because it, those bison are way different than mine and, and those bison can kill you. That woman was very lucky. It looked like it was a yearling. I'm not sure if it was a bull or a, a heifer. It doesn't matter. Uh, but luckily that woman, it was not a full grown adult or a mad mama or a full grown, uh, competing bull that got after uh, her while she laid on the ground. She's super lucky. So let me see here. I'm going to go back and. Well, I replace Dunbar, uh, Brian says. I, I, you know, we'll see how he does. Uh, they're prime. Uh, they're in their prime uh, breeding age until I think about seven. I think they can even, they can still breed longer. It just depends on what kind of babies he's throwing and how he's doing. And uh, we want all of our babies, we want all of our cattle, cattle. We want all of our bison to be bred and all of our females to be bred. Let's see. Did all three cows calf, um, Linda? Um, let me see here. I want to answer that question. If I can, this is hard to do. You said you were expecting three. Were all the three born? Uh, yeah, so we actually, we actually thought there was going to be four. Uh, females that were going to have calves when I didn't get bred. Uh, the other one was Dakota. She got sick. We knew she wasn't going to be bred. She wasn't healthy enough to have a calf or keep a calf. So, um, we were a three for four, which is, uh, it's still a decent percentage, but, um, we really wanted our youngest heifer, which is peaches to get bred and, and, and that didn't happen. So unfortunately, well, we, we had three and they're all doing great. So we're happy about that. Uh, Pedmar is the last name. Dusty, what made you want to raise buffalo? I seem to remember you talking about it, but can't remember why you decided. Well, one of the reasons uh, why I raised bison is uh, I'm going to flip this around so you guys can watch them. Maybe my phone won't overheat. One of the reasons I uh, raised bison was uh, they're just cool animals. Did you just see them running there? I mean, Cattle, cattle don't look, uh, you know, as majestic as they're running. And um, so I just was able to work with them, 
you know, when I worked in the National Park Service. But one thing I love about these animals is they're, they're just social animals. They're not wild, crazy beasts. There are, there are some wild ones out there, but um, they're, they're just good animals and they're just so neat. And probably the main thing to answer your question is this animal was roaming around 30 to 60 million of them were roaming around the Great Plains in the 16 and 1700s. And they went down to less than a thousand and they're back today. And I get to raise an animal that almost, almost came so close to disappearing. And how cool is that, that I got to be, that I get to be a part of that and I get to raise um, a mare. V. Morgan Bogart or for bison to have twins. It's possible. But yes, Linda, all three babies were born. We got two heifers and one bull. Okay, Johnson, you're right. You just got to really respect these animals uh just mine alone i mean mine are not that crazy but you you got to know what you're doing and you have to respect these animals because don't forget at the end of the day they're still wild in them and uh they can flip on you at any moment and uh they are the most athletic hoofed animal i, I tell you that these suckers are so athletic they're so strong they're so fast and you always have to keep an eye out for them. Miriam asked, do you ever have to assist with birth? Thank gosh we don't, because that would be crazy. No thank you. Jennifer, where's the uh, cattle farm ranch in Oklahoma? Bass, 167, how many females do you have now with all the babies now? Golly, that's a good question. How many females do I have uh, with the babies? Let me think. I got three, four bulls. I got nine females. I think that's right. I got nine females. But not all of them are ready to breed yet. Sam, volunteering a museum in Scottsdale. Scottsdale's a cool place. Teach kids about American bison. You need a tanned bison stomach. I don't have one of those, but I'd love to have one. Good for you. Teach those kids. I love teaching those kids about bison. Jody, did you get to see the bison born? I've never seen them born. I saw, I've seen them when they are in labor, but I've missed them when they're actually being born. They just hide and you just never know when they're going to pop those calves out. They are majestic, Linda. Susie asked about the barn. The barn is coming along. We started putting up sheet metal today, so stay tuned on uh, the barn being finished. Hopefully we get that done this week, putting that sheet metal up. That's the last thing. Yes, Ben, I know I should get set up for Super Chat. I thought I could do it, but I'm not. It's probably my fault. They're, Marion, their comeback is great. What a story on these animals to almost completely disappear. Uh, Bonnie, how long do the babies stay that beautiful color? They, they do sure stick out. If you guys want me to get a little closer, you have to be a little patient with me. Let me move my ATV up and we can get a little closer. So how long do these babies stay the red color? About, I'd say maybe three months and then they start to, they start to change color, so. If my phone overheats, I'm sorry because I'm going to go out in the middle of this pasture and, and ch check on the bison here. So let me see here. Uh, David asked me, how big of a herd are you planning on having? Uh, I don't know. My kind of magic number right now is 50. I kind of like to see how we do with 50. I think that would be really neat. Y'all see Maya, skinny blue healer. I 
uh, I think with 50 uh, animals, uh, that would be really cool. Uh, Hey guys, sorry. This is our uh, this is our bottom pasture. It's our far pasture. So, um, okay. Oh my, that would be a challenge to milk a buffalo. Yeah, absolutely. No thanks. I do not want to milk a buffalo. No way. No thanks. The true one. Yes, that is me. Come on now. Yeah, sorry. Um, this is our bottom pasture. This is kind of the most. It's uh the furthest away from kind of civilization maybe i don't know what you would call it but this is a we're down in the wood what's up braxton yeah so um we're uh braxton beavers one of my ex-students and um so we're kind of far down in here so sorry it keeps cutting out but um hey buddy i miss you yep i miss i miss seeing you so um anyways uh but thank you guys for following um and um I'll, uh, maybe they won't be down in this far bottom pasture. It's really pretty down here. But uh, next time if they're not down here, we'll do a checkup again. And I want you to see those calves as they start to change colors. And um, so it's pretty cool to see them change. You can already see one of them do that. Um, yeah, that's right. Just kicking it down under. How cool is that? Is that your, one of your fan, ex students is on here. That's right. That's right. They, I told them, and they asked me uh, if uh, if I was um, if I was on YouTube, and so I, of course, they found me on there and whatnot. But so yeah, it's cool to see my students on there. I miss all my students, good kids. Um, but um, anyways, uh, when I I'll, we'll do another uh, live video at some point, and um, I'll figure out the super chat, guys. I'm sorry, you know, I've only been doing this maybe a year. I should probably already know it, but. Maybe I need to just check YouTube out. So, um, uh, for right now, Pamela asks, are you going to keep this herd for breeding? Um, yes, I will. Um, we're going to do that. But, you know, um, we may um, get uh, a bison, a, a bull slaughtered. We're not sure yet. We'll see. Still got choices. We've got a, got another year. We need these things to get bigger so we can make a choice. Uh, but thank you guys for following. Thank you.